Chapter 14, Music from the Heaven Chapter 14, Music from Heaven M.O. Yinyu suddenly stopped. The four warriors from the M.O. family, who followed her out of the thick forest, were filled with a heavy look on their face. On the ground, lied Master Karu's corpse which was still warm. However, the corpse had already been deprived of all its profound chi, and lay there dry as a mummy. Looking at the scene, all four warriors stood by M.O. Yenyu's side with terror in their eyes. One of them came up to M.O. Yenyu after some hesitation, and said, Miss M.O. M.O. Yenyu was trembling. After a while, she replied with a frown, Stop the chase. But Miss, the warrior wanted to add something. Master Karu had already achieved the second sky of the nascent realm, the same level as me. Moreover, he had far more fighting experience than me. M.O. Yenyu shook her head with a hopeless look, I don't know how he killed Master Karu. But this means that he is capable of killing any of us right now. If we keep chasing him, we probably won't even be able to make it back to the Merchant Union. So we just let him go like this. Miss Mo, we have spent a lot of money in order to get Master Karu to work for us. That warrior said in a low voice. So Li Tian, if we don't give up, can you come up with a better idea? That warrior suddenly went silent. Mo Yenyu kneeled down beside the cold corpse of Master Karu. She searched through his body and cursed in a low voice, Shit! That bastard has taken everything from Master Karu, all the medicine and medical books. This time we are literally here for nothing. All the other four warriors went silent together, they didn't dare to say anything. Go back to Johnson. From now on, we must act in groups. No individual movement is allowed. M.O. Yenyu took a deep breath. Then, she stood up and turned back to the way they came. From that moment, she hated Shi Yan's guts. On the other side, Shi Yan was still running for his life in the dark forest. The bloodthirst was still running wild inside his body. It was devouring his consciousness bit by bit. The negative energy of madness, brutality and bloodthirst was invading his mind uncontrollably. Gradually, his sight blacked out and his body felt on the verge of a breakdown from the wild energy. At that moment, he was extremely weak and tired. He couldn't gather any strength in his arms or legs. He must avoid a fight with anyone. Otherwise, he would be dead for sure. Shi Yan wasn't sure how long he could hold on. He never expected his body to react in such a strange way, so he had made no contingency plans. Boom! The wild bloodthirst inside his mind finally exploded. Shi Yan was panting heavily as he totally lost his sight. There was only one voice in his head, whispering, repeating the same word, Kill! 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 Shi Yan knew that before long, he will have lost all his sanity, and become a mindless bloodthirsty beast. He would be filled with the intent to kill. A beautiful music suddenly flew into Shi Yan's ears from a distance. The music was like water drops falling onto a jade plate, like the wind shuttling through a silk curtain. It was as soft as a bird flapping its wings, as light as a gentle stream flowing through a quiet forest. The music was so beautiful, so peaceful, as if it flew down from heaven. The beautiful music was like a soft hand soothing his heart. It had taken away all his bloody and crazy desire. Slowly, it also helped Shi Yan regain his sanity, which was on the brink of breakdown. Thanks to that soft and soothing music, Shi Yan gradually regained his sanity before he lost his mind. He slowly walked in the direction of that music with an intoxicated look on his face. He felt like his whole body was soaking in that beautiful music, and all the bloodlust inside his body had totally disappeared. In a small valley full of unique flowers and special plants, Shi Yan saw a beautiful figure playing the zither. She was just sitting cross-legged in the middle of the flowers. She slightly lowered her head and was completely putting herself into the music, unaware of Shi Yan's presence. Shi Yan moved closer and closer and stopped around 100 meters away from her back. 
He stood there and was flabbergasted with the beautiful figure in front of him. He stood there with closed eyes, trying to immerse himself in the beautiful sound of zither. After a while, the sound of zither gradually slowed down, and finally stopped. Shi Yen felt awakened from a pleasant dream. He found that his anger and bloodlust were completely gone, as if they had never existed. However, his body still felt heavy. The intense pain in his chest was especially intense. It seemed that he was still suffering from that blow from Master Karu. Shi Yen concentrated his attention and could feel the flowing profound qi within his meridians. He could sense that his body was still processing the profound qi that he had absorbed from Master Karu. The beautiful figure at distance slowly turned around with an ancient zither in her hands. She slightly frowned and looked straight at Shi Yen. Shi Yen couldn't help but tremble. His eyes were staring at the beautiful girl in front of him unceasingly. So beautiful. He unconsciously blurted out. That girl was around 18 or 19 years old, dressed in a white overskirt. Her eyes were sparkling, her teeth were gleaming, her skin was soft and smooth, and her figure was delicate and slim. She could be described as a beautiful goddess from heaven, but at the same time, also as the cute girl that lived next door. She was so perfect. Shi Yen couldn't tell who was more beautiful, Mo Yenyu, or the girl in front of him. The lovely girl gave Shi Yen a single glance. She then turned around in silence and walked slowly towards the little creek hundreds of meters away with the zither in her hands. Shi Yen couldn't help admiring the beautiful women in this world. Overall, he had only met two women in this world, but they were both so breathtaking, like one in a million. Miss. Thanks a lot for your beautiful music. Can I, seeing the girl was walking away from him, Shi Yen couldn't help but shout. Hey, stop it. Enough is enough. Suddenly, a strong figure jumped from the giant ancient tree in front of Shi Yen. It was a middle-aged man with a hairy yellow face. He was wearing a grey-brown warrior's outfit. He looked very tall and strong with a huge sword on his shoulder. But he didn't look very serious, just standing in front of Shi Yen, looking at him with a weird smile on his face. No doubt, Shi Yen was caught off guard. He instantly put on alert. Just by looking at him, he could clearly sense a terrifying energy from this yellow-faced man in front of him. It didn't take him long to understand that this yellow-faced man was definitely a warrior way above his level. The yellow-faced man was just looking at him, not intentionally releasing any energy to pressure him at all, but Shi Yen already felt like he was as untouchable as a steady mountain. Shi Yen took a step back, showing that he didn't come with any evil thoughts. Then he faked a smile and said, the music that the beautiful miss played was so enchanting. I just can't get enough. I stayed just to listen to more of her music, nothing else. Don't worry. To Shi Yen, this girl had the most magical music skills. Her beautiful music could apparently help him control the bloody desire within his mind. Shi Yen was not sure when this craving for blood inside of him would come back again. Therefore, he was desperate to find something to help him control this ugly desire inside him body. I can tell that you are just a lustful guy, nothing else. Otherwise, I wouldn't have let you live until now. The yellow-faced man laughed, and said in a relaxed mood, but here is not the place for you to be lustful. I suggest you get the hell away from us. Otherwise you will be in a lot of trouble. Okay, as you wish. Shi Yen lifted both hands to show cooperation. He didn't stay any longer. However, he took a glance at that beautiful figure in distance before turning around and leaving. Uncle Luo, I sensed a strong evil spirit in that man. Back then, his whole body was filled with a killing desire and he almost went berserk. However, after his bloodlust faded away, he dared to take such a lustful look at me. I guess he shouldn't belong to the dark world. Mu Yudai said with mild discomfort when she recalled Shi Yan's lustful look at her. That man, it seemed that he could never hide his desire from within. Although there were other men who also wanted her, 
they would at least do it in secret or cover up their desires when they laid eyes on her. They wouldn't expose their dirty thoughts to the world. However, that guy, he didn't even try to cover up his lust for her in his eyes. What she saw in his eyes was a simple and straightforward desire. He can't be from the dark world. The assassins sent by the dark world were all warriors of the nascent realm, but that guy was still an elementary realm warrior. Luol Hao laughed and said, but interesting though, that guy was not even a nascent realm warrior, but dare to dream about our beautiful princess who has already achieved the third sky. This guy has some balls. Ha! Ah, I am still not sure when I can recover. Currently, I am powerless. Mu Yu Dai slightly sighed with her heart filled with sorrow, Uncle Luo, if the assassins did come and you couldn't defeat them, please just leave me behind. I, can rely on myself. What is this nonsense? Hearing this, Luo Hao was apparently not very happy. He said with a firm voice, we are not far away from the merchant union right now. If we can survive the next few weeks, one month at most, we can definitely get out of this dark forest. Once we reach the merchant union, the dark world can't do anything to hurt us. Goo. Goo. With a strange whistle from the distance. Before long, two men and a woman who dressed like a mercenary came out of the forest with a heavy look. The leader came up to Luo Hao and said, Sorry Uncle Luo, we couldn't keep up with the trackers from the dark world. Luo Hao nodded, and said with a frown, we must set out right now and choose a new location to rest. Otherwise, the assassins from the Dark World will soon find and surround us. The five of them did not stay for long. They quickly packed their stuff and left in a hurry. Right after Shi Yen left the girl, the craving for blood slowly rose up again in his mind. This unstoppable desire for blood may have something to do with the profound chi that Shi Yen got from Master Karu. Because Master Karu had the power of a nascent realm warrior, his profound chi was mixed with too much negative energy. Therefore, it would take Shi Yen much more time and effort to purify his profound chi. While his meridians were processing Master Karu's profound chi, these annoying negative energies would spill over from time to time and ignite his crazy desire for blood from inside his body. But that girl's music could help him control those wild desires, so he didn't lose his sanity and fall into an abyss of craziness and chaos back then. However, his meridians were still working on purifying Master Karu's profound chi. Until this process was completed, there was a pretty good chance that Shi Yen would fall into that bloody, crazy state again. Before his body finished the purification of Master Karu's profound chi, that beautiful girl could definitely be his cure to stay sane. Knowing that another bloody urge was slowly creeping up on him, Shi Yen was overwhelmed by a bad feeling. After some hesitation, he still started walking towards that girl's direction. Only the beautiful music of that girl could help him to calm down. And only by following her steps, could Shi Yen get the chance to hear that heaven-like sound again, you're tuning in to the Han Li's Wuxia Adventures YouTube channel. Don't forget to subscribe and join us on this journey to catch the most captivating stories. Chapter 15, Promoting to Nascent Level Warrior Chapter 15, Promotion to the Nascent Realm Uncle Luo, there's someone following us. One among the group of mercenaries said to their leader with a low voice, it must be that scout sent by the Dark World. That mercenary had a young handsome face. He looked like 25 to 26 years old, and was already one. 85 meters tall, with a strong and slim figure. He was a nascent realm warrior who had already reached the third sky. His eyes were shining with energy and was always on alert. Just from a simple glance, Shi Yen knew that he was an excellent warrior. No, he is not from the dark world. He is just a horny little stalker, so shameless. No need to pay attention to him. Luo Hao shook his head, and said with a frown, let's hurry. Just leave him alone. Zhao Xian didn't look happy about this, and said with a cold voice, is he after Miss Mu? How dare he? Shall I wait here to teach him a lesson? While he was talking, he gave a caring look at the delicate girl named Mu Yudai, 
who was leaning on Luo Hao. No, don't make any trouble if it's not necessary. Luo Hao shook his head again, and asked the girl in a soft voice, Dai, are you okay with this? Shall we speed up a little bit? Mu Yu Dai was looking very pale, and was perspiring heavily. She smiled politely, yes, I can hold on. We could go faster. Maybe it would be better if we leave that man behind. Otherwise, he will also be killed by those assassins sent by the Dark World. Luo Hao couldn't help but sigh, feeling pity for this kind-hearted girl. He nodded to her and said, Dai, don't use any more of your profound chi. I am here for you to lean on. After saying that, Luo Hao held the shoulders of Mu Yu Dai as if she were a delicate flower, and ran between the trees in the forest with ease. When he was about to land on the ground, he would control his mighty body to just slightly touch the ground before jumping up again. There were no footprints left behind him. Obviously, he was a first-class master at maneuvering his profound chi. On the other side, Shi Yen was struggling very hard with such a march. It was becoming more and more difficult for him to breathe. The desire for blood had been killing him all the way. His body was also aching from the intense blow from Master Karu. Due to the intense fight he just had, Shi Yen suffered a severe loss of profound qi, which couldn't be restored within a short period of time. Under these circumstances, if he ever encountered Mo Yenyu again, there was no doubt that he would be dead. Therefore, he had no choice but to recover as soon as possible and control his own body which had gone wild. The beautiful music of that girl was indeed his only hope. He didn't care whether that girl liked him or not. Shi Yen felt like he didn't have a choice. Even if she thought that he was a shameless bastard, let it be. He would always follow her steps, as long as she would play that enchanting music again. Shi Yen tried to control his growing urge for murder and had an evil look on his face, Shi Yen moved most of his profound qi, which was not much, to his legs, and tried his best to keep up with the five people ahead of him. Shi Yen completely cleared his mind and became more focused than ever. The only goal that he had in his mind was to keep up with those people. Once he cleared his thoughts, he felt this march not as hard as before. Uncle Luo, I cannot believe that guy was just an elementary realm warrior. In midst of their rapid movement, Zhao Xian suddenly said with surprise. Luo Hao was also wondering. According to his knowledge, a warrior of the elementary realm shouldn't be able to keep up with their speed. Although they had successfully distanced themselves from the man behind, they never managed to ditch him. That man must have some endurance to keep him chasing all the way. This made Luo Hao a little curious, making him wonder whether he had underestimated this warrior the previous time they met. Uncle Luo, I can keep up. You could speed up a little. Mu Yu Dai said with pain and a layer of sweat on her face. No, if we go any faster, you would get hurt. Luo Hao stubbornly refused he said in a low voice with a frown, don't pay too much attention to the man behind. He is looking for death. If he dies, it is not our fault. Ah Wu. As they spoke, a loud roaring as horrifying as that of a wild beast came from behind, which was apparently from Shi Yen. However, that roaring didn't sound human at all. It was filled with craziness and an evil craving for blood and killing, making anybody who had heard it tremble inside. Is this guy human or not? The hot female mercenary named Di Yalan couldn't help but tremble, and said with a scared look in her eyes, how could any human make such a terrifying sound? This is even more terrifying than the roaring of a demon beast that had gone crazy. The crazy craving inside his body is eating him up again. Luo Hao started to look nervous, and said quickly, stay away from him. Otherwise, he might attack us. He has already gone crazy. It's not very difficult to kill him, but it might waste our precious time to escape. The unnecessary fight will certainly draw the attention of those Dark World's assassins, and we would be in a lot of trouble. Just let me help him. Otherwise he will become a crazy monster that only knows to kill, and would start a bloody war in this dark forest. Mu Yu Dai said after a little hesitation, 
and unwrapped the zither that she had been carrying. Despite the dissuasion of Luo Hao and the other warriors, she sat down with her legs crossed and started to play a song. Luo Hao stepped hard on the ground with anger, he is such a bastard. He is not at all worthy of your help. The mesmerizing sound of the zither flowed through the dark forest like a gentle stream, right toward Shi Yen, as if it was specifically meant for him. With both of his eyes turning crimson, Shi Yen was on the brink of going crazy, almost losing to that murderous rage. Hearing the familiar music, he was suddenly awakened. With a light flashing through his eyes, he just stood there like completely lost in that beautiful music. A trace of the negative energy combined with desperation and fear slowly drifted out of his body and started to surround him like a light mist. It felt like millions of tornadoes in each of his 720 meridians and he could feel the unique energy that he got from Master Karu being purified and concentrated over and over again. After a while, Shi Yan's eyes gradually returned to normal, and he began to regain the look of a sane man. At that moment, he realized that this was all due to the generous help of that beautiful girl. She had saved him again. With deep gratitude in his heart, Shi Yen sat down right where he was. He put his heart and soul into this beautiful music and started to operate his profound qi inside his body without a second thoughts. Immersing in this soothing music, he started to relax. Right in the middle of this dark forest, filled with all kinds of unexpected danger, Shi Yen managed to enter the world of the selfless state. He didn't remember how long it took before he awoke. The mist wrapping around him had already been absorbed into his own body, and under his guidance, flew through the different meridians inside his body. Suddenly, thousands of warm but strange streams of energy spilled over from all the meridians in his body and started to propel his profound qi through his veins. Shi Yen couldn't help but tremble. He could clearly feel his profound qi compressing and strengthening with an amazing speed. Within seconds, he could feel his profound qi became five or six times stronger, and it was more concentrated than before. His strengthened profound qi suddenly started to gather in his abdomen, and filled his entire body with power. Realizing that he must have finally purified all the profound qi that he got from Master Karu, Shi Yen was overwhelmed. Shi Yen slowed his breathing and concentrated all his energy in operating all his profound qi towards his twelve major veins and eight special veins. The profound qi stormed through his entire body like a raging flood. Shi Yen was able to unblock all his congested veins, albeit suffering from intense pain. He felt as if his shoulders were finally able to relax. Now that his profound qi had become stronger than ever, he felt like he had unlimited potential. The sun had already set, and the moon was shining brightly in the starry sky. With the last of his veins cleared, Shi Yen was very excited. He was trying very hard to contain his exuberance, while operating the profound qi in a cycle throughout the body. When his cycle was finally over, Shi Yen felt like he was waking up from a very long dream. He looked up at all the shining stars in the sky, feeling nothing but unparalleled happiness. Now that he had broken through all the veins in his body, he could be said to have promoted to the nascent realm. From the profound qi that he got from Master Karu, and through the incidents when he almost lost his mind and went crazy with bloodlust, he had finally purified all the power he got from Master Karu and broke through all his veins with the newly purified and concentrated profound qi. Now he had finally entered into a whole new level. After purification of all the energy he got from Master Karu, the bloodlust that had once tangled his mind had suddenly vanished. Now that he thought about it, Shi Yen realized that every time after absorbing the profound qi from the dead, and until the profound qi was completely purified by his meridians, there would always be some negative energy spilling over from his meridians, which would trigger the darker side of himself and drive him into a state of insanity. Because the first few victims of him were just elementary realm warriors with moderate energy, he could still control the negative desires. But Master Karu was a nascent realm warrior, with the power far beyond Shi Yan's league. There was too much negative energy within Master Karu's profound qi. Therefore, that time Shi Yan couldn't control the negative energy, and almost lost his sanity. Right now, 
since he had fully purified the profound qi that he got from Master Karu and entered a completely new level, Shi Yan didn't need to worry about the eruption of the evil power anymore. Kaka Shi Yan stretched his body a little and stood up slowly. He was feeling completely refreshed. The broken bones in his chest also seemed to have recovered. Shi Yan checked his body for wounds, but found them all healed. This made him extremely happy. He knew that his speedy recovery was not only due to his promotion, but also had something to do with his immortal martial spirit. Right before losing himself to the music, he had felt the cells near his chest wounds repairing and beginning to heal. Looking around, Shi Yan realized that the location he was in was completely exposed, with no tree cover or shade. Realizing that he had been operating his profound qi here, forgetting everything around him, Shi Yan felt lucky that nothing unexpected had happened to him. By practicing his profound qi in such an exposed location, had Mo Yan Yu still been looking for him, he would have definitely been captured by her. At present, that mesmerizing music was long gone. He remembered the sky was still bright when fell under the effects of music, however, now it was already midnight. He must have been practicing for a long time without realizing. He felt immense gratitude towards that beautiful girl. She had saved him more than once. The first time she might have saved him unintentionally, but the second time, it was specifically for him. Based on the discussion he overheard from the five people, Shi Yan realized that they were being chased by someone. However, he didn't think too much and decided to continue following them. He didn't like owing favors, and so he decided to pay back the girl's kindness in his own way, you're tuning in to the Han Li's Wuxia Adventures YouTube channel. Don't forget to subscribe and join us on this journey to catch the most captivating stories. Chapter 16, Treasure Chapter 16, Treasure Beside the small gentle stream, the ground dragon was drinking water quietly, its robust body covered with scales. Mo Yenyu was sitting upright in a sedan high on the dragon and playing with a blue smoke bomb in her hand, lost in thought. Recently, she was haunted by Shi Yen. Every time she remembered the cold decisiveness in Shi Yan's eyes, she became restless. How she wished she could catch him and ruin his veins and bones. Given Master Karu's death, she had already released the medicine slaves who were of no use now. With her were eleven warriors from the M.O. family who were only of the elementary realm. Their power was insufficient to help M.O. Yenyu search for Shi Yen. As such, she could only wait for the relief troops from the family. All of a sudden, a pale blue light shot up across the sky some five miles ahead. They have arrived. M.O. Yenyu's spirit rose. She immediately threw the blue smoke bomb up into the sky, and thus the same pale blue light was seen above her. The warriors around the ground dragon rejoiced with a lively outburst of happiness as if they were getting ready for a fight. In less than a quarter of an hour, three dark shadows showed up from afar and flew in their direction. The first of them had a graceful beard and wore an indifferent smile. He approached near Mo Yenyu and laughed loudly. Yenyu, where is Master Karu? Third uncle, Master Karu is dead. Mo Yenyu explained in a very unwilling manner, we met a thief midway. He was only elementary ranked, but he still was able to kill Master Karu. I just can't figure it out. Mo Chauvis smile disappeared at once and his face turned pale, have you got the thing that was on Karu? Mo Yenyu shook her head, it was taken by that thief. Stupid. Mo Chauga cursed in a low voice. With a cold face, he observed, we received information that Karu had stolen an incomplete picture of the Gate of Heaven from his teacher. His teacher, Mu Sun, is looking for him everywhere for that incomplete picture. It is said, in the God area where the Gate of Heaven leads to, are martial skills of the spirit and even sacred level. I came here in a hurry with two escorts just for that incomplete picture. But you let him die. How stupid. What? Mo Yan Yu was shocked, how could that be? Why would Karu leave Medicine Valley with you if he hadn't stolen that valuable map from his teacher? You think he was attracted by the wealth of Mo family? 
Humph. He was attempting to get shelter in the merchant union, so that his teacher Mu Sun couldn't kill him. Mo Chauga thought for a second seriously and reproached, tell me the details. That man must be still in the dark forest. We have to find him. The picture means a lot. We, the Mo family, have to get it. Mo Yenyu started to realize how bad the situation was. She told him all the details, except that she was violated by Shi Yen twice. Dumbass. Mo Chauga scolded again. He flew into a rage, you didn't keep tracking him. That bastard is only of the elementary realm. No matter how he killed Karu, he must have paid a significant price. He might have been hurt too. If you had chased him you could have killed him easily. Too dumb. I was afraid that we would lose more, so, Mo Yenyu lowered her head in shame. An elementary realm guy, and you were afraid of him. Mo Chauga was annoyed, you wasted so many resources of our Mo family. What are you doing now? Show me the way. You. 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 Bring the ground dragon back to the merchant union through the secure route. Others. Follow me and search. They looked for Shi Yen for two days but still found nothing. Under the moonlight, Shi Yen was leaning against an ancient tree and deep in thought. He had decided to stop the chase for the time being. He took off Karu's bag from his back and opened it to look into the contents. Inside the bag was a volume on poisons, several bottles of poison refined by Karu, and two mortal level martial skill books, and Apart from those things, there a dark yellow, incomplete picture, on which were painted two hills. Shi Yen studied it for two days but found nothing, so he didn't take it seriously. Of the two martial skills, to train, required a collection of black chi first. Thinking hard for two days, Shi Yen didn't come up with any idea of where he could find black chi, and so he soon forgot about it. Fortunately, the other martial skill, didn't require anything special. One simply needed to operate his profound chi according to the meridian map. Shi Yen took out the book on from the bag and started to train in it. He was determined to learn that skill and thus made every effort in remembering the mnemonics of the skill. Was a defensive martial skill. It used profound chi to form a layer of dark light around one's body in order to defend from an enemy's assault. It was just a mortal level martial skill and needed no requirements but one, the flow of profound qi. Shi Yen packed the bag and observed the surroundings for a while. Assured that it was safe, he quietly climbed up a tree behind him, hid himself in the thickets, and started to train the. After reaching the nascent realm, his veins were as smooth as silk. Once he thought of moving his profound qi, it would immediately flow into the veins. Sitting in meditation, Shi Yen operated his profound qi quietly and trained according to the meridian map for. The profound qi flew around his body like a gentle stream in a controlled manner. At once, Shi Yen sped up the circulation of his profound qi. Pump. Suddenly a hazy black light started emitting from Shi Yen. It gradually started forming a layer over his whole body. Shi Yen was quite sure that he was training in the correct way, so he once again accelerated the profound qi. The black light emitting his body began to grow in intensity. At first it was only half a meter, then it formed a one meter thick layer, exactly the same as Karu's. A long time passed. Shi Yen exhaled a mixed breath and opened his eyes leisurely. The profound qi in him had already finished six big circulations. Success. Shi Yen smiled. He found that it was very easy to train in the. In merely one night, he had grasped the essential part of this martial skill. With his profound qi growing, he only needed to accelerate its circulation and his defense would increase greatly. Up in the sky. The moon had disappeared. Dawn was coming near. Shi Yen was not in a hurry to leave. He calmed his mind and tried to operate the profound qi for a second time. The profound qi flew toward his left arm. 
Once it arrived at the first meridian, Shi Yan had another thought and his profound qi promptly started rotating in that meridian. After three breaths, Shi Yan changed his mind again. Immediately, the profound qi flew backwards and he felt a splitting pain in that vein. It was the phenomenon that occurred while training. Enduring the pain in his arm, Shi Yan continued to circulate his profound qi. He tried again as he according the process he previously followed in his right arm. The muscles in the left arm began to contract, and slowly became dry and thin. Thin white fog was coming out of his left arm. In the white fog was a mix of negative feelings such as fear, cruelty and despair, which had the weird power of bewildering people's minds. The negative feelings sourced from the meridians in the left arm and were temporarily bound by the fog. Once he fought with others, they would leak out of his arm directly. The sun was hanging high in the sky. Shi Yan was sweating all over while fully concentrating on his left arm. His left arm was covered with a heavy fog which was sending out a putrid smell. Shi Yan was then filled with a desire for murder. Hu, hu. Shi Yan was trying very hard to control his desire. He withdrew the profound qi in his arm little by little, back into his abdomen. Therefore, his arm gradually went back to normal, and the white fog around it began to drift back into his meridians through his veins, till none of it remained around his arm. Shi Yan leaned against the tree trunk with a deathly pale face. Exhausted, he was drowned in mixed feelings. This martial skill was able to induce all the negative energy in his meridians, though the negative energy would also disturb his mind. This martial skill was a double-edged sword in battle, which would make him lose his mind. It did bring a warrior enormous power, but it was at the same time very dangerous. Nevertheless, Shi Yan remembered when broke Karu's, and the odd state of Karu when his brain was invaded by the negative energy. Shi Yan thus made up his mind to train this vicious martial skill with his whole body. He wanted to know what would happen to his body when all the negative power within his all meridians was induced. He had this vague thought that as long as he finished training the first sky of, his body would have a major shift and that his strength would surge by two times. Shu. 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 There came a sound of someone approaching from afar. Shi Yan frowned, and slowed his breathing. He then started observing his surroundings. Not before long, seven shadows, each of whom were wearing a grey gown and a pale mask, stopped under the ancient tree, seeming to be waiting for something. On the shoulders of six of those seven men, were signs of silver stars, while on the last one's shoulder, was a sign of silver crescent. Wun. Wun. A weird sound came from the grove ahead, sounding like a communication signal. Under the ancient tree, the tall, thin man with the crescent on his shoulder had a cold look in his eyes. He listened to the surroundings for five seconds and remarked, according to the secret message, they have been spotted in a valley twenty miles away. Now chase after them. The troop of seven people passed rapidly. Ten seconds after they left, Shi Yen stuck his head out of the leaves. After thinking for a while, he jumped down the tree and followed after them secretly, you're tuning in to the Han Li's Wuxia Adventures YouTube channel. Don't forget to subscribe and join us on this journey to catch the most captivating stories. Chapter 17, 10 Times of Gravity Chapter 17, 10 Times Gravity the Serene Valley was now filled with broken weapons. Luo Hao, Zhao Xian, and other men were encircling Mu Yu Dai, defending against the fierce attacks of those from the Dark World. The tall, thin man in a grey gown, on whose shoulder was an embroidered silver crescent, was directing his eight subordinates to encircle the four of them. The eyes were cold and ghastly under their pale masks. Miss Mu, you'd better come back with us to the Lord of the Dark World or we don't know what we will do to you. The tall, thin man in grey gown, seemingly the leader, remarked coldly as he was directing his people. Disgusted, Mu Yu Dai shook her head and said firmly, I would rather die than go back with you guys. So you have decided not to cooperate, Miss Mu. Then I'm very sorry if my people catch you. Pausing for a second, the man grinned, Luo Hao. 
you should know how powerful our dark world is. If you go against us, you are bringing about your own destruction. Ha! Luo Hao burst into laughter. His voice was resonant. I'm always alone. To kill me, you dark world would have to pay a lot. You are a dark moon emissary of the dark world, with the power of the second sky of the disaster realm. It's enough to bring you with me when I die. Do you think you even deserve that type of death? That emissary shook his head, and vanished into thin air. The next moment, he was standing three meters in front of Luo Hao. He stretched out his left hand, his five fingers shaped like a claw, between them glowed a ghost-like green light, which suddenly flew toward Luo Hao, and started to twine about him like a ribbon. The Luo Hao's facial expression changed a bit. He uttered calmly, Zhao Xian, you three. Protect Dai. Boom boom boom. Luo Hao's heart was beating several times faster than before. Around him, the power of gravity surged ten times. All of a sudden, the eight men surrounding Luo Hao's group felt an immense pressure, as if they were being pressed down by a huge mountain. The pressure almost made them kneel on the ground. Even the crescent emissary was affected. However, he grunted and said, Luo Hao, what a surprise. You're is truly at an advanced level. Ten times gravity. No wonder you are so arrogant. Ha ha ha. If I can't even do that, how could I claim that I will bury you with me? Luo Hao replied calmly, with an indifferent smile on his face. Meanwhile, the broadsword on his shoulder gave out a dazzling blue light, increasing that monstrous pressure. Luo Hao laughed loudly as he wielded the sword in his hand, and walked right in front of Mu Yu Dai, obstructing the crescent emissary. After the crescent emissary displayed the, a gloomy green light had pervaded the air. But it seemed to be influenced by the increased gravity, for the crescent emissary had difficulty controlling it. He curved his fingers and pushed forward, as he encircled Luo Hao with other three star emissaries. Zhao Xian, take Miss Mu away. Luo Hao shouted. The broadsword in his hand gave out a bright blue light, and looked like a shooting star when slashed. It was able to obstruct the enemy and bar their way. Shi Yan was hiding behind an ancient tree, some fifty meters away from the fight. He gazed at the fight with a rigid face, with his eyes shining in the dark. All the people from the dark world were at the nascent realm. And that crescent emissary had reached the second sky of the disaster realm. It was too much for him. If he hastily took action, he would be easily killed before he could move near Mu Yu Dai. Shi Yan was envisioning various scenarios for the best possible approach. A few seconds later, his eyes radiated. He grabbed his bag cautiously and took out the bone cutting powder, which was wrapped in a soft cloth. Lowering his body, he then quietly climbed out onto the tree branch. Through the long branches of the tree, Shi Yan was moving cautiously toward the battling crowd. Bone cutting powder was a drug invented by Karu, the alchemist who was unmindful of his work. It made one's veins and bones become numb, decreased their power. Its effect could last for three hours, enough time to change the result of a battle. Zhao Xin. Leave. Luo Hao roared, as his sword radiated with blue light. He, by himself, was fighting against the Dark World's assassins. Miss Mu. Zhao Xian was anxious, he stamped on the ground and said, Hurry please. Mu Yu Dai looked tranquil, but her eyes showed stubbornness. She spoke softly, I won't leave. If you three stay, we might win. But once we leave, Uncle Luo will definitely die. Without Uncle Luo, we can't win against the Dark World anyway. We would still be caught. Good. Let's fight till death. Zhao Xian was a smart person. Upon hearing Mu Yi Dai's words, he made up his mind and shouted, Di Yalan. Hu Long. Fight. They encircled Mu Yu Dai, took out their sharp weapons, and charged with all their strength toward those Dark World emissaries. Four of you, go and take care of those three kids. 
the Crescent Emissary frowned and ordered coldly, Don't hurt Miss Mu. The Lord has given the order. Miss Mu should be taken back alive and unhurt. Yes sir, the four-star emissaries replied, and in no time rushed toward those three. Just then. Abruptly, a slight sound came from above. The Crescent Emissary aroused vigilance. As soon as he looked up, he shouted, Damn it! Run! It was too late. Gray dust fell from the sky like drizzle and spread over the area. Everybody, including those from the Dark World, were covered by the dust. No one was spared. The Crescent Emissary quickly realized the situation as he held his breath. Though he drew back, there was still a lot of dust on his gown. However, the dust had a strong penetrating power as it entered into his body through his skin. As his hands and feet became numb, he had a quick thought, and operated his profound chi to defend against it. But those star emissaries were not as cautious as he was. Many of them inhaled the bone-cutting powder, which went into their hearts and lungs, which then quickly affected their bodies. In a few seconds, they were numb all over, their bones softened and their strength weakened. Luo Hao's face turned dark all of a sudden. He was a victim too. Exhausted from the fight, he circulated his meager profound chi thorough out his body in order to counter the poison. He looked up into the sky with cold eyes. A thin figure showed up from the branches above them. With an indifferent face, that person flew down from the tree lightly and stood by Mu Yu Dai calmly, with the latter shocked. He took out a medicine bag and said lightly, Smell the fragrance, you will be detoxified. It's you. Astonishment took over Mu Yu Dai's moonlike face. She couldn't believe it was Shi Yen who flew down from the above. Gazing at Shi Yen carefully, Mu Yu Dai was even more surprised. Shi Yen had reached the nascent realm in the past few days. How on earth? Miss, you have saved me twice. Once unintentionally, and another intentionally. I will remember that forever. Shi Yen smiled. Seeing that, Mu Yu Dai grabbed the medicine bag. He added, the effect of the bone-cutting powder shall last for three hours, which is not too long, but not too short either. You should know how to deal with it, Mississippi. His dark eyes suddenly went cold. Got it. Mu Yu Dai got what Shi Yen said. She took a deep breath of the fragrance, and then passed the bag to Zhao Xian near her, quick. The Crescent Emissary was still operating his profound chi to defend against the effects of bone-cutting powder. Seeing that situation, he shouted with a rigid face, Move! Grab that medicine bag. If they are cured by that powder, none of you will survive. After saying that, he forced his profound chi and dashed toward Luo Hao. As soon as those star emissaries comprehended the situation, they began to besiege Zhao Xian again despite the poison in their bodies. Before Zhao Xian could get the medicine bag from Mu Yu Dai, he was surrounded by numerous attacks. His face turned pale, and he had to give up on the medicine bag. Instead, he concentrated and began to confront those emissaries' attacks. So were Hu Long and Di Yanlan. Under the fierce attacks of those star emissaries, they couldn't even breathe from the medicine bag. Mu Yu Dai held on to that medicine bag, but couldn't get a chance to pass it to others, so she became very anxious. Helplessly, Mu Yu Dai turned to Shi Yen. Her beautiful eyes were asking for his help. Everybody else was poisoned by bone cutting powder, and she couldn't operate her profound chi wildly. Although Shi Yen was low ranked, he was quite important now. Seeing Mu Yu Dai's pleading eyes, Shi Yen smiled and asked naturally, Miss, may I know your name? Mu Yu Dai. A nice name. Shi Yen nodded, and imprinted that name in his mind. Under Mu Yu Dai's gaze, he darted out instantly. With a dagger in his hand, Shi Yen broke into those emissaries and wielded his dagger with a serious face. The dagger made cold streaks in the air. In no time, the star emissary who was most affected by the bone-cutting powder had a deep wound in his neck and fell to the ground on his back. 
Xu Yan made swift moves amongst those emissaries and left scars on them, his body flashing like a sharp weapon. Uh, Mu Yudai combed her short hair to the side of her ear with her hand. Astonishment flashed through her eyes, and there was a weird look on her face, I just. I just wanted him to pass them the bag. You're tuning into the Han Li's Wuxia Adventures YouTube channel. Don't forget to subscribe and join us on this journey to catch the most captivating stories. Chapter 18, Being Pursued Chapter 18, Being Pursued A star emissary fell on the ground, and his profound qi was siphoned off. Shi Yan circled thrice around him, and his meridians were charged with foreign profound qi. Waving his dagger, Shi Yan was covered in dark light. He moved among those star emissaries swiftly, avoiding their attacks while leaving wounds on their bodies. Three star emissaries were completely poisoned by the bone-cutting powder. Their hands and feet were losing strength slowly, and their movements were becoming very slow. Assaulted by Shi Yan, the three stood in a triangle, supporting themselves arduously. Shi Yan looked indifferent as he moved about like a ghost. Between the waves of that dagger, icy light exploded. Ah! One of the star emissaries was hit in the back, so he couldn't help but shout, kill this bastard first. The other two star emissaries nodded in hatred. Letting go of Zhao Xian, Di Yalan and Hu Long, the three emissaries spared no effort to operate their profound qi. Three streaks of rainbow light sprang from their hands. The rainbow light flew toward Shi Yan like a sentient arrow, reflecting the thoughts of its masters. Be careful. That is the from the dark world. Mu Yu Dai cried, don't keep the image of that in your mind, or it will chase you forever. Shi Yan decisively moved out of the entanglement, dropping any ideas of fighting against the enemy and cleared his mind. In an instant, the three lost their direction and shot toward the grass in the distance. Bits of grass burst out in the explosion. Damn it! One star emissary cursed, and prepared to use some other tricks. Just then, Zhao Xian smelled the medicine bag and gradually recovered from the bone-cutting powder. Realizing this, the star emissary who was ready for trouble, dashed toward him. Zhao Xian swung his arms. His arms started to stretch out and draw back like a snake. Like a snake, Zhao Xian clasped the emissary, binding him from all angles. Hu Long. Mu Yu Dai shouted, and threw the bag to Hu Long, who smelled the bag and quickly dashed out. As Zhao Xian and Hu Long had both rejoined the fight, Shi Yan felt less stressed. After sniffing the bag, the two got their energy back. But those three dark star emissaries got weaker and weaker after they poisoned by the bone cutting powder. Soon they would be killed by Zhao Xian and Hu Long. Di Yalan, out of the battle. Give this medicine bag to Uncle Luo. Mu Yu Dai called to Di Yalan as she saw her ready to join the fight. Di Yalan understood what Mu Yu Dai meant, and rapidly ran to Luo Hao. Shi Yan stopped and walked to Mu Yu Dai. Standing by her, he looked indifferent, but his eyes kept wandering to Di Yalan. Bordeaux long hair, Bronze skin, Di Yalan was wearing crimson armor, which only covered her big breasts, the triangle area, and her cute hips. Her flat belly and shiny long legs were all exposed. Though Di Yalan's face was not that pretty, her figure was really hot, and her dress was wild enough to arouse any man. Even while standing beside Mu Yu Dai, Shi Yan didn't look at her at all. On the contrary, he couldn't move his goo goo eyes away from Di Yalan and didn't even bother to hide his male instinct. Is she pretty? Mu Yu Dai frowned and sniffed. Apparently she was a little unhappy. Shi Yan came to his senses and smiled to her, every man will be attracted by this hot girl. Mu Yu Dai had a gleam in her eyes as she gazed at him for a while, and then she giggled. You are really funny. How old are you? Are you a mature man? Shi Yan was surprised. She reminded him that his body was only 17 years old. And since he was getting skinnier these days, he looked like a 14-year-old boy now. 
being in such an immature body and calling himself a man, talking about such erotic thing. Everything he did was really weird. Shaking his head, Shi Yen didn't explain. He pretended to walk away from Mu Yu Dai naturally and approached Zhao Exian and Hu Long. With a shrill cry, a star emissary spurted blood out of his mouth. His heart was ruptured by Zhao Exian's. He shook for a moment and then died. Shi Yen came forward. The profound qi from the dead body was slowly absorbed into Shi Yan's body in a way only he knew. At the same time, Shi Yan's eyes began to show a fierce glint, and a killing desire took over his mind. He knew that before the profound qi was purified, that desire would not disappear easily. Having seen what happened with Master Karu, Shi Yan had some experience now. After sensing it carefully for a while, he found that since he had reached the nascent realm, he could suppress the crazy desire in his mind and kept rational after he absorbed the profound qi from the two persons who were of the same level. Shi Yen guessed it was because his level was upgraded. He was merely an elementary realm warrior before, while Karu was of the nascent realm, he crossed a realm to purify Karu's profound qi, thus he went that crazy. Go after them. While Shi Yen was pondering, Zhao Xian yelled, and ran with Hu Long in the direction of those escaping emissaries. Stop chasing. Let's leave right now. Seeing that the leader, the Crescent Emissary, was running away too, Luo Hao shouted at Zhao Exian and Hu Long. Why, Uncle Luo? Zhao Exian couldn't understand. Luo Hao breathed the fragrance from the medicine bag deeply, and urged, Someone's coming. Must be another troop sent out from the Dark World. It will be too late for us to leave if the two troops meet. Remember. What is important is not killing those emissaries, but to protect Dai. Hearing that another troop was coming, Zhao Exian was astonished, and thus nodded in agreement. Luo Hao said no more. Though he had not entirely recovered, he came holding Mu Yu Dai's arm and said to Shi Yen, Boy, thank you very much. However, it's none of your business, so don't get involved and suffer. Goodbye. I own Miss Mu a life. Shi Yen did not seem to know how ferocious the dark world was. He looked nonchalant and said, One needs to return in form of a lake for the favor of one drop, and Miss Mu did save my life. I discriminate between love and hate. If someone treats me badly, I would pay him back ten times the hatred. If someone does me a favor, I would also return ten times the gratitude. I will travel with you for a while. Hope I can help. You sure are a man. Who long praised? Di Yalan showed radiance in her eyes, and giggled, Kid, you are not only horny, but also righteous and bold. You peeped me for quite a long time. I was going to teach you a lesson, now you are forgiven. You, Mu Yu Dai was stunned. She didn't expect Shi Yen to be so fair-minded. She was a little bit moved. Well, if you insist, I would not stop you. Luo Hao replied and nodded. He held Mu Yu Dai and began to run. The other three followed them rapidly. Shi Yen inhaled, and followed instantly. With a troop of warriors from Mo family, Mo Chauga was moving fast through the woods. Suddenly he stopped halfway, rigidly staring at some emissaries from the dark world who had showed up unexpectedly. The crescent emissary was astounded too. He observed Mo Chauga and his warriors with questioning eyes. Not knowing where they came from, the emissary was a little worried. Maybe they came to aid Luo Hao. Second uncle, Mo Yin Yu murmured. Her intuition was telling her that those people were not here with good intentions, so she wanted to remind Mo Chauga. Mo Chauga stared into the crescent emissary's eyes for a while, and remarked, Our target is a skinny boy around fifteen years of age, who was last seen carrying a bag. We have no intention of offending you. The crescent emissary was secretly relieved secretly. The bone-cutting powder was taking effect in his body now, so he could only utilize 30% of his ability. If he were to fight against Emo Chauga, the outcome won't be good. Hearing what Emo Chauga said, 
he had an idea. He said cunningly, oh, we have seen that boy. He was with our target. May I know where that boy is now? Mo Chauga asked politely. He didn't notice that Crescent Emissary was poisoned by the bone-cutting powder. But according to the gloomy air of that person, he guessed that the emissary was a tricky one, so he held his arrogance. Over there, the Crescent Emissary directed and answered coldly, you'd better be careful. That bastard is at a low level, but he is accompanied by a warrior at the first sky of the disaster realm, who had the martial art. Too tough. First sky of the disaster realm. Hearing that, M.O. Chauga frowned slightly, and then nodded, thanks for the information. Let's go. M.O. Chauga waved his hand and left hurriedly with the warriors of the M.O. family. This guy was at the disaster realm as well. After they left, the Crescent Emissary's eyes turned dim. He smirked, little bastard, you ruined my plan. I will kill you when I recover. You're tuning in to the Han Li's Wuxia Adventures YouTube channel. Don't forget to subscribe and join us on this journey to catch the most captivating stories. Chapter 19, The Martial Spirit of Petrifaction Chapter 19, Petrifaction Martial Spirit A huge ancient tree appeared in front of Luo Hao. Dozens meters high, it was so thick that ten people couldn't circle it hand in hand. The leaves almost covered the sky. Luo Hao stopped walking suddenly and released Mu Yu Dai, then gazed at the ancient tree. He looked dignified and seemed to be making a crucial decision. As Zhao Xian, Di Yalan, and Hu Long came near the ancient tree, they turned serious as well, seemingly knowing there was something unusual about this tree. Shi Yen frowned, and he began to stare at this huge tree too, not saying a word. Luo Hao took a deep breath and turned to them, speaking in a low voice, to the right side of this sky tree, there are hardly any demon beasts, so most warriors and trade caravans choose this way when they cross the dark forest. This route is quite safe. Even if we encounter some demon beasts, they would be of low level, level 1 or level 2. And this route is closer to the merchant union, merely taking 10 days to get there. Zhao Xian and the other two nodded. Apparently they all knew it. After pausing for a while, Luo Hao added in a serious manner, but to the left of the sky tree, the situation is totally different. It's a longer way to the merchant union, and is haunted with demon beasts and many audacious warriors and soldiers. Those who dare to go this way are mostly tough guys. Being in danger all the time, they follow no restrictions of any kind. If we choose this way, we need to look out for not only demon beasts, but also for those irrational warriors and soldiers, especially when we have two pretty girls here among us. Humph. Anyone who would want to take advantage of me, I will chop his head off. Di Yalan made a cutting motion in the air, with coldness in her beautiful eyes. Uncle Luo, what do you think? Zhao Xian asked. If we advance to the right, those from the Dark World will catch up in approximately one day and there will be a nasty fight. Having no choice and depressed, Luo Hao said, no one knows if we would be lucky enough in these upcoming days. And if their reinforcements came, it doesn't bode well for us. What about going to the left? Hu Long asked. If we go to the left, we would come across demon beasts, and more likely, we will be killed by those insane warriors. But it will be the same for those from the Dark World. They have bad reputation, and hardly anyone will go against them in the Fire Empire. Yet in this situation, they are the targets of the demon beasts and warriors. If they meet high-grade demon beasts accidentally, it's possible that they all will be killed. Luo Hao made his speech slowly, and after explaining them the situation, he remarked, to go via the right side, we won't be confronting any demon beasts or warriors, but the Dark World will be a huge threat. To the left, we may be attacked by demon beasts and warriors, but the Dark World shall also be threatened. Therefore, to go via the left, we have a greater possibility to escape. Go to the left then. Mu Yu Dai said decisively. Okay. Luo Hao nodded, and took a glance at Shi Yen, and said, Hey kid, 
there is still time if you want to leave. Otherwise, you will have no chance. I will go with you guys. Shi Yen had made up his mind. There was a very irrational side in his personality. That's why he had drowned in extreme sports, which were like games of death, for the past ten years. When Luo Hao was depicting the danger of the left side, Shi Yen couldn't help but get excited. Luo Hao nodded and waved his arm, well, let's set off. From now on, everyone must be on alert. One hour later. M.O. Chauga and the warriors from the M.O. family also stopped at the sky tree. Second uncle, which way would they have chosen? M.O. Yenyu asked. I will chase by the right side. If I don't come back in two hours, you guys catch up this way. However, if I don't find them in two hours, they should have taken the left way. M.O. Chauga thought for a while and ordered them to wait at the intersection. Then he flew away to the right side. After one and a half hours, M.O. Chauga came back with a pale face, not even a slightest sign of these people. How dare they take the left side? Everybody watch out. There are many demon beasts and warriors on the left side. Never be negligent. Remember, don't make a fuss with those warriors and soldiers. These people are all lunatics. Don't provoke these people who don't know what death is. Yes sir. Let's go. Three saber-toothed rhinos were strolling along a brook leisurely. They were level, three demon beasts. A silver glow shone on the back, their teeth were as sharp as sabers, while their fist-like brown eyes glittered with a murderous look. The three rhinos were all covered by hard mud, which formed a natural armor, through which any normal weapon would find hard to cut. The three saber-toothed rhinos were sipping water now and then, while looking around discreetly, seemingly to be looking for game. In the bushes not far from them, Luo Hao made a gesture to imply everybody to be quiet. Until the three saber-toothed rhinos walked away slowly, Luo Hao uttered a sigh of relief. He said, saber-toothed rhinos are level, three demon beasts, equaling human realm warriors. They move fast and have sharp tusks. Low-leveled warriors would either be injured or be killed once they met saber-toothed rhinos. Shi Yen kept wandering his eyes over those slowly disappearing rhinos, showing an interest in having a fight with them. Rather than killing the demon beasts here, our goal is to protect Dai. Everybody remember this. Don't bring up any unnecessary ramifications. Luo Hao seemed to have noticed Shi Yan's thoughts, and thus reminded them casually. Shi Yan grinned, and nodded to show he understood. Let's keep going. We need to be watchful here. To keep an eye on the surroundings is more important than moving forward fast. Try to get away from demon beasts and warriors. Don't get ourselves in trouble. Luo Hao added. Then he advanced with the troop. It was getting dark. Beside a lush tree at the brook, Zhao Exayan and the other two separated and examined the surroundings with a cautious eye, in case any demon beast showed up. Shi Yen sat upright on the wet ground with a serious look. Bloodlust was lingering in Shi Yan's mind like smoke. He had an urge to release it. It was high time he purify the profound qi he absorbed from the two star emissaries, thus he was becoming a little impatient. Luo Hao stood beside Mu Yu Dai all the times. Frowning, he focused his eyes on Shi Yen, lest this boy took any abnormal action. Mu Yu Dai looked indifferent, and she stared at Shi Yen for a while. When she saw the aggressive look on his face, she sat down gently and crossed her legs. Setting the ancient zither on her legs, she began to play. Hearing the zither, the concentrated bloodthirst in Shi Yan's mind seemed to be resolved by a certain power and gradually faded away. Holding his breath and focusing his mind, Shi Yan operated his profound qi peacefully. One hour later, a warm flow gushed out of his meridians all over his body. Shi Yan's body trembled. Suddenly, Shi Yan got a severe thirst in his body. The weird power gushing out from his meridians was absorbed by his muscles and bones, before it could mix with the profound qi in his abdomen. 
The warm stream went into his muscles and bones, and set root in his blood and flesh. Within several breaths, the weird warm stream from his meridians pervaded into his blood, flesh and bones all over the body, which astonished him a lot. Thus, Shi Yan began to feel the warm stream flowing in his blood, flesh and bones. Bang! There was a heavy strike in his head, and the next moment, he felt a strange change in his body. Turning pale with fear, he opened his eyes promptly to find his bare arms turning gray, bit by bit. Petrifaction. Shi Yan was frightened. He began to withdraw his attention from his body, not giving a single thought to the sudden change. As his thoughts changed, his hardening body soon went back to normal. Concentrating, Shi Yan looked at the others. Luo Hao and Mu Yu Dai were chatting behind a tree not far from him, without noticing what he had just experienced. Relieved, happiness took over his face, as he secretly enjoyed a mirthful time. His body became hard, which meant the petrifaction martial spirit of the Shi family had awakened. The petrifaction martial spirit was exclusive to the Shi family. As one's level increased, it became stronger and stronger, to the extent that one won't be damaged by weapons and the impact of profound qi. Before, Shi Yan had thought that the owner of his body didn't possess this martial spirit. It surprised him that it had awakened after he reached nascent realm. He was ecstatic. The petrifaction martial spirit was beneficial in battles. After petrification, one's body would be as hard as rock, but was still very agile, which would increase one's ability a lot. Apart from petrifaction, Shi Yan also found he also possessed the immortal martial spirit, which could achieve self-recovery. With the help of these two martial spirits and more training, he couldn't imagine how powerful his body would become. No. Shi Yan frowned and thought, don't martial spirits show up not long after birth? But this body is already seventeen, and yet my martial spirit can still awaken. Too strange. Or does it have something to do with the weird energy gushing out from the meridians? An idea suddenly flashed in his mind. The activation of the two martial spirits, petrifaction and immortal, were somehow related to the blood pool and the changes in his meridians. Shi Yan guessed that the weird stream gushing out from his meridians could stimulate the martial spirit hidden in one's body. With this thought, he was so excited that he wanted to sing out loud and celebrate. A martial spirit was inherited. Generally, it got stronger as one's level increased. There were hardly any other ways to strengthen a martial spirit. A martial spirit was the gift that a warrior was most proud of, and also the vital thing to define a warrior's ability. Warriors trained arduously to improve their martial spirit. But even if one's level had upgraded, there were limitations in increasing the level of a martial spirit. On the Grace mainland, even those legendary god-level alchemists could barely refine pills effective to general martial spirits. Those pills were rare and precious on the Grace mainland, and were believed to exist merely in legends. Nonetheless, the effect those pills had on martial spirits was also quite limited. After all, martial spirits were an inherited gift, which was very hard to change. Surprisingly, the weird warm stream gushing out from Shi Yan's meridians seemed to go against the rules. It could virtually stimulate martial spirit and increase its ability, you're tuning in to the Han Li's Wuxia Adventures YouTube channel. Don't forget to subscribe and join us on this journey to catch the most captivating stories. Chapter 20, Steal Himself Chapter 20, Steal Himself Stars were illuminating the dark sky, surrounding the bright crescent moon. The cool moonlight went through the tree leaves and scattered around, illuminating the quiet and dark forest. Di Yalan and Hu Long were patrolling around, while Zhao Exian was having a rest, leaning against the tree with stable breaths, eyes closed. Luo Hao was standing next to another ancient tree on alert, never relaxing his vigilance. Among the dense leaves of that tree, Mu Yu Dai was sleeping quietly. After a long day's journey, she was exhausted, for she couldn't operate her profound qi at will. Luo Hao looked up at Mu Yu Dai, who was resting among the leaves, now and then, showing a rare tenderness in his eyes. 
Da. Da. Luo Hao's thick eyebrows frowned, as he saw Shi Yan approaching nearby. He asked in surprise, still awake. Yeah. Shi Yan nodded and answered in a low tone. He stood still beside Luo Hao, and asked under his breath, wouldn't it be easy for them to spot us here? Of course not. Luo Hao smiled, there is no settled route through the forest and demon beasts and warriors are always showing up now and then, so those from the dark world will find it hard to distinguish our tracks. In this area, those demon beasts and warriors are whom we need to pay more attention to. That is to say, they won't find us easily. After pondering a bit, Shi Yan asked again, Uncle Luo, do you need to consume too much profound qi to release your gravitational field? Why do you want to know this? Luo Hao was puzzled. I want to steal myself with the help of your gravitational field. Under the gravitational field, I will have to bear a huge pressure, which will strengthen my body. I want to know my limits. Shi Yan replied seriously. He didn't go with the conventional path. Usual training didn't excite him, so he seeked out passion desperately. To steal yourself by using my gravitational field, Luo Hao's eyes lit up, and he nodded, great idea, but are you sure you want to try it? If those emissaries found us while you were exhausted, you couldn't even fight back. I don't plan to use my profound QI. Shi Yen smiled. To steal yourself using merely with your body? Luo Hao was shocked. Yes. Luo Hao fell in a deep thought for a long time, and said, you have just reached the nascent realm, so it is beneficial to train your body in a proper way and get used to it. But you haven't strengthened your body before. It is crazy that you want to train in my gravitational field without operating your profound chi. You're sure you can endure that? I want to try. Shi Yen replied calmly. Good. Follow me. Luo Hao nodded, and walked away without making a sound. Shi Yen followed him. After they left in silence, Mu Yu Dai, who was sleeping on the leaves, slowly opened her eyes. Gazing at the two people beside the river from afar, Mu Yu Dai was taken by surprise and puzzlement. She murmured to herself, just reached the nascent realm and he wants to steal himself under the gravitational field. Is this guy insane? Mu Yu Dai became more and more confused as she thought about it, so much that she couldn't fall asleep anymore. Out of curiosity, she slipped down the ancient tree dexterously, and sneaked over to Shi Yan and Luo Hao, in order to see what would happen next. Let's start with the gravitational field at five times normal gravity first. Generally, a nascent realm warrior's body can only endure this after undergoing specialized training. You have to do what you are capable of. When you feel it is unbearable, stop the procedure at once. Standing still, Luo Hao added, since it's your first training, run laps around me first. If you can run ten laps without using your profound chi, your body will strengthen. Remember, do within your limits. After his speech, a violent wave broke out from Luo Hao's body all at once. In an instant, centering about Luo Hao, the gravity surged by five times. The area around him seemed to have collapsed. The air had become so heavy that one could hardly breathe. An invisible pressure suddenly surrounded him all over. Shi Yen felt as if sand had filled all his cells, and his body was carrying hundreds of pounds of weight. The tendons of his knees tightened, and his heart was beating at a faster rate. Under the effects of the increased gravity, all his muscles were under tremendous pressure. His body slowly adapted to the invisible pressure from the increased gravity. However, he found it hard to breathe, even when merely standing still. Holy crap! Shi Yen was too astonished when he felt that overwhelming pressure. He thought to himself that, anyone who went into Luo Hao's gravitational field would be severely influenced by it. They wouldn't be able to use their abilities at their best. It was only five times of gravity. What would happen if it was increased by ten times? Realizing the horrifying part of this martial spirit, Shi Yen took a deep breath, and drove all the distracting thoughts out of his mind. He yelled, and then began to run around Luo Hao. 
his body shook as the pressure increased. His feet seemed to be filled with metal, and were heavier than a thousand pounds. Normal running also became the most terrible torment. In the gravitational field, his body couldn't move easily. He felt as if being pressed by a giant. He could hardly breathe. One lap. His speed had slowed down by half. Three laps. He slowed down by half again. Five laps. Shi Yan was not running, instead he was walking. On the sixth lap, Shi Yan's face was as red as an apple, while the blue veins on his arms were trembling like small snakes, about to jump out of the skin. On the seventh lap, Shi Yan looked like a beast, as his eyes were almost on fire from the lack of oxygen. On the eighth lap, Shi Yan staggered. Every step exhausted him. After every step he would quiver. At that time, Luo Hao couldn't stand it anymore. He shouted, it is your first gravitational field training. Don't try too hard. You have reached your limit here. Enough. Stop. Or you will be dead tired. Shi Yan raised his head, while his eyes looked as if they were bleeding. He said in a grave tone, he he. That was interesting, let's go on. Luo Hao stood aghast, and could only come up with the idea conclusion, this guy went insane. In the bushes not far from them, Mu Yu Dai was speechless, her mouth covered by her hand. She had never met someone like Shi Yen before. Shi Yen didn't reply Luo Hao. After another beast-like haul, he continued to step forward. With his face showing extreme stress, he finished another lap. By the last lap, his body was swaying. He had a quiver in each step, and could fall any time, as if he would die at any moment. With his body in that state, he finished another lap, step by step. After that, he got a weird smile on his face. Waking from his astonishment, Luo Hao was relieved when he saw Shi Yen was okay. He was about to withdraw the gravitational field before advising Shi Yen. Mu Yu Dai pressed her mouth with her hand, and had an amazed look in her attractive eyes. She had never thought that Shi Yen would achieve this extreme challenge, even if he was at the nascent realm. Another lap. Shi Yen yelled. What? Luo Hao's body shook greatly, and his eyes grew as sharp as knives. He shouted, Enough. Don't fool around. Before Luo Hao withdrew the gravitational field, Shi Yen continued to walk unexpectedly. He was staggering, and finally dropped on the ground. Luo Hao was just about to shout, when he found Shi Yen was using both his hands and feet, crawling like a demon beast. He seemed to be seeking death on purpose. After about half an hour, Shi Yen finally made it to the end, as slow as a snail. Mu Yu Dai stared at him from the bushes, completely stunned, you're tuning in to the Han Li's Wuxia Adventures YouTube channel. Don't forget to subscribe and join us on this journey to catch the most captivating stories. Chapter 21, Pervert Chapter 21, Pervert Shi Yen lay on the ground on his back with his limbs spread. His face was red, as though he were bleeding. He was panting heavily and his body was twitching every now and then. Looking at the sparkling stars above, Shi Yen could feel every cell of his body trembling. As his body twitched, his muscles, veins, and bones were all expanding and contracting regularly. Not using his profound qi, he closed his eyes slowly, and began to feel the fantastic shift in his body, the amazing quivers in the muscles and ribs, the destruction and reconstruction of cells, and the slow increase in strength. As a wild fanatic for extreme sports, Shi Yen knew that reaching his this limit this time was merely the beginning of next adventure. The limit of a human body could always be broken, and be surpassed time and time again. The potential of human body was infinite. Those extreme sports experiences had taught him that only by breaking the limit could he obtain rapid progress. With his eyes closed, he could clearly sense the changes happening in his muscle fibers, even without operating his profound qi. Sensing it carefully, Shi Yen soon found the immortal martial spirit in his body beginning to work. 
It was repairing his body in an incredible way, reconstructing and strengthening his torn muscles. Rigorous training under increased gravity enhanced one's explosive force. Only when the muscles tore under these extreme conditions could they become bigger, more powerful, and more explosive after reconstruction. As a fanatic for extreme sports, Chu Yen was so aware of the truth, which had been verified by his repeated practices. He knew the fastest way to strengthen his muscles. Feeling the effects of his immortal martial spirit beginning to reduce the pain in all his muscle fibers, Chu Yen struggled to sit up. He took the food out of his bag and began to wolf it down, feeling happy with his progress. Intensive exercise consumed too much of his energy. He had to eat a lot of food to recover quickly and improve his power. The dry meat was eaten and slipped into his guts where it was quickly digested and became nutrition. In a very short time, he had finished enough food for five people. As he felt the changes in his body, his smile became broader. After exercising his limbs for a while, he closed his eyes and began to circulate his profound chi quietly. As the profound chi moved, Shi Yen felt a slight quiver in his body. Just as he had expected. The profound chi was flowing in his meridians virtually 30% faster than normal. His body became more sensitive after the extreme stress and likewise, his meridians became abnormally dynamic. His weak meridians seemed to be absorbing the profound chi flowing through them, and with that energy, his meridians expanded and became firmer. Shi Yan had presumed long ago that strengthening the body was as important as training the profound qi, the two were complementary. Once the body was strong enough, the profound qi would condense faster. The stronger the body, the more beneficial it was when operating in condensing profound qi. So maybe, the two martial spirits hidden in his body would enhance as well. His first attempt had successfully verified Shi Yan's hypothesis, so he was grinning from ear to ear. In the thick grass far away. Dai, why are you here? You should have a good rest. Get plenty of sleep so your martial spirit recovers. Luo Hao had noticed Mu Yu Dai when he was training Shi Yen with his gravitational field. As Shi Yen was sprawled on the ground exhausted, Luo Hao came to Mu Yu Dai secretly and complained. I couldn't sleep so I am just walking around. I just happened to see you training. Mu Yu Dai smiled gently in fear. She paused, and said with a naughty smile, Uncle Luo, was it too much for him? I remember that when you trained Zhao Xian, you had just tripled the gravity. Zhao Xian was at second sky of the nascent realm then, and had the experience of body strengthening before. Why did you quintuple the gravity for this guy? Wearing a bitter smile, Luo Hao shook his head and sighed, I used the quintuple gravity at the very beginning to stop him from wasting energy and make him quit. Who would have known that he was insane? I was shocked in the end too. I tried to stop numerous times but he wouldn't agree. You mean, you just tried to scare him in the beginning? So he won't ask you to train himself later on? Mu Yu Dai rolled her eyes and felt quite speechless. Yup. Luo Hao sighed again. You know, to control the gravitational field consumes a lot of profound chi, and during that, I can't be distracted. I neither wanted to waste my own profound chi, nor wanted him to be paralyzed tomorrow, which would slow our journey. Who would have known that he is a lunatic? So, Uncle Luo, how many laps did you presume that he could have managed? For laps. Luo Hao lifted four fingers and said in a heavy voice, Average warriors who have just stepped into the nascent realm without any systematic body training can only manage four laps in the quintuple gravitational field, five laps at most. That guy is so small and thin, so I thought he would ask me to stop on the fourth lap. Hmm, but he finished eleven laps. Mu Yu Dai got a weird expression on her face. She couldn't help but take a glance at Shi Yen from afar, who was sitting there as firm as a mountain and training again. God. He, he is upright again. What? He can still move. Luo Hao was stunned as he glanced over at Shi Yen. He shook his head and said, Lunatic. This guy is a lunatic. Too reckless. 
I guess he couldn't even move tomorrow. With this intensive training, he would find his body hurting everywhere tomorrow. I bet we will have to adjust our plan tomorrow. Well, let it be. What an unruly guy. Mu Yudai shook her head and smiled subtly. The next morning, before the sun rose, there was very heavy fog. Dai, come down. It is time to set off. Under the ancient tree, Luo Hao called out to Mu Yudai softly. I want to sleep more. Mu Yudai murmured as if in dreams, why so early today? Weren't you sure that he couldn't move today? He is waiting for you. Luo Hao said in a very low voice, his face still trying to control his surprise. Ten minutes ago Shi Yen came to him asking for enough food for three people. Right in front of them, Shi Yen wolfed down the food and patted his belly, sighing with satisfaction, let's go. Luo Hao was totally astonished, he glared at Shi Yen with frightened eyes for a few minutes before he murmured to himself, pervert. That guy is waiting for me too. Mu Yu Dai murmured, rubbing her eyes unwillingly. Yes, he is more energetic than anyone. He smiled bitterly. What? Mu Yu Dai suddenly woke up, astonished. She looked for Shi Yen under the tree, to find him sitting straight like an arrow with bright eyes. The same as Luo Hao, she murmured, pervert. Shi Yen scrutinized his own wearing and was sure that there was nothing strange. He frowned, Uncle Luo, and Miss Mu, which part of me looks like a pervert. Your whole body. Mu Yudai chuckled and got in a joyful mood. Her chuckle seemed to bring a spring that made the beautiful scenes in the dark forest seem dim in comparison. Zhao Xian and Hu Long were fascinated with Gu Gu eyes, but the soon realized their misdemeanor and lowered their heads to cover it up, not daring to look into Mu Yudai's eyes directly. Shi Yen narrowed his eyes and wandered his burning eyes on Mu Yu Dai's beautiful face audaciously, Miss Mu, if I were a pervert, I would put my hands on you first. So be careful tonight, I would be unable to control myself. You should scream loudly then. I love women's crazy screams so much. How dare you? Di Yalan sniffed. Oh, sorry, I forgot there is another pretty woman. Maybe you are angry because I ignored you. Trust me, I will go for you too, don't be jealous now. Shi Yen pretended that he just realized that and patted his head to show regret, as if he had forgotten something important. Ha ha. Ha ha ha. Mu Yu Dai held her stomach and burst into laughter in the tree, almost falling down. She pointed at Shi Yen and giggled, you funny guy. Why are you so hilarious? Ha ha. Di Yalan was dumbstruck, and then chuckled too, feeling helpless when it came to Shi Yen. Zhao Xian and Hu Long were taken over by confusion too, and their facial expressions couldn't be stranger. They just couldn't understand that even when they always acted politely with the two girls, and didn't dare to do anything to offend them, they two girls scarcely smiled at them. While Shi Yen showed not the slightest hint politeness towards the girls with his giddy words, but the girls smiled at him a lot. What the hell is with that? Oh. Luo Hao glanced at Shi Yen strangely and smiled, well, stop it now, let's move. You're tuning into the Han Li's Wuxia Adventures YouTube channel. Don't forget to subscribe and join us on this journey to catch the most captivating stories. Chapter 22, Shi Family Chapter 22, Shi Family The Merchant Union Tianyun City. In the stone room of the Shi family. Yang Hai, who was a little stout, was sitting on a stone stool with a serious face. Eyes narrowed, he was checking an account book, page by page, and reporting the recent month's production status of the quarry to the family head of Shi family, Shi Jian. Though Shi Jian was in his seventies, he looked in good health. Being the family head of Shi family, he was simply wearing a plain gown which was suited to martial training. Sitting on a brown stone stool, he had a calm demeanor and was listening to Yang Hai earnestly. After Yang Hai illustrated the case, Shi Jian frowned and commented, Hai, the production in recent months has literally decreased by 20%. What's up? 
It's all because of the M.O. and Ling families. Young Hai sighed, many skilled pitmen were lured away by their high salary. We are now lacking in pitmen. We were in bad situation due to the secret fight with the two families. Those pitmen feared that we would be beaten by them, plus they were being offered a higher salary, so the pitmen turned to them. Humph. Shi Jian sniffed. They are doing that deliberately. Since M.O. Yenyu and Ling Xiaofeng got engaged, the M.O. family and Ling families have gotten closer and closer. The Ling family has also been interfering in our secret fight with M.O. family. They must have come to an agreement, or M.O. family couldn't compete with us. Master, when do we strike back? Yang Hai asked. No worries. I have a plan. Shi Jian looked assured, then he paused and frowned, is my little bastard grandson Shi Yen still is not back home? No. I was just about to mention that. Yang Hai looked disturbed, that stupid boy said he would go to the dark forest before he left. It's been a year since he left home. I received information a couple of days ago that Mo Chaoga and Mo Yenyu were in the dark forest as well. I'm afraid he has had an accident. He didn't take any capable escorts with him. His mother Qin died early, and we have this single child. I am so worried. Shi Jian frowned and kept silent for a long while. Then he sighed, this boy was born without inheriting the petrifaction martial spirit of the Shi family, and nor was he fascinated by martial arts. Instead, he was crazy about those odd things, and would always goof around. Troublesome. Master, it's all because of my humble bloodline. If I had a martial spirit, Qing would have given birth to a kid with a martial spirit. Yang Hai was ashamed. It's all doomed. Shi Jian shook his head, Hai, I found you by the endless sea. Though you are not my own, I treat you as my own son, or, I wouldn't have betrothed my daughter Qing to you. Yes, you don't own a martial spirit, nor did you train in martial arts, but you play a key role in the development of Shi family and the management of our quarries. We wouldn't have accumulated so much wealth if it hadn't been for you. Though you don't know about martial arts, you contribute a lot to the family. But nowadays, a strong warrior is much more valuable than anything. Yang Hai smiled and mocked himself, if I had a martial spirit, I would have trained in martial arts. And if Yan had inherited the petrifaction martial spirit from his mother, he too would have trained in it. But a martial spirit is inborn. Shi Jian nodded, and sighed, yes. It's true. A strong warrior is more valuable than anything. Family head, could that little boy be in danger? Yang Hai couldn't help but worry. He shouldn't be. Shi Jian thought for a while, and added, my grandson isn't into martial arts, so the M.O. family have never set their eyes upon him. Neither M.O. Chaoga nor M.O. Yenyu have seen him before. So it's not possible that they would harm him. But I still feel something's wrong. He should have been home. Well, I will tell those soldiers in Silent Town to keep an eye for him. Silent Town was beside the dark forest. Once they spot Shi Yen, they will let us know. So don't worry. Thank you, family head. Why? Your son is also my grandson. Shi Jian glared at him and berated, How many times have I told you? Don't call me family head. I'm your adoptive father, and also your father in law. You can call me anything but family head. I got it, father. Okay. The dark forest. A silent night. Luo Hao was standing still on the side of the track, with a quintuple gravitational field surrounding him, it was getting very hard to breath. Shi Yan was perspiring from all over his body, as he pounded in the air and jumped around Luo Hao. Blue veins showed up on his face and neck, quivering like little snakes. In the grass, Mu Yu Dai was gazing at them secretly, biting a straw in her mouth. Guess how long could he endure today? Di Yalan asked as she walked up and sat beside her. You finished your task today. Mu Yudai chuckled, without replying her. 
Zhao Xian took over. It was really dangerous. A single horned silver snake was twining around the tree trunk, and I didn't notice it. I was almost bitten by it. If I hadn't moved quick enough, I would be dead right now. Di Yalan still looked terrified. She cursed, more and more demon beasts are appearing these days. We have to be careful. We have met five groups of demon beasts in the past three days. They walk around especially at night. You'd better take me with you next time you want to peep. Or you will be in danger. You just wanted to say the last thing right. Mu Yu Dai giggled. Ha, you found it out. Di Yalan didn't disguise herself and said, that guy is really something. He broke his limit every day in the past three days, and got more and more stamina. Though I'm at the third sky of the nascent realm, I don't dare break the rules in the quintuple gravitational field of Uncle Luo. This guy is literally insane. Every time, he won't stop until he faints. Nuts. Nuts. His endurance is most shocking. Mu Yu Dai shook her head slowly, as her eyes glimmered. Yes, and he recovered in such a short time. Unbelievable. He is only at the first sky of the nascent realm, but he has incredible recovering ability. Di Yalan was confused too. This guy, has so many secrets, Mu Yu Dai thought for a while and murmured, I have never seen anyone greedier than him. He almost ate up all our food in the past three days. I'm now worried about food. He is such a rice bucket asterisk. Di Yalan laughed, but he talks in a funny way. Any of his casual talks could amuse us a lot. And he has so many novel ideas that I have never heard of. He says that kings must be voted in by citizens, and merchants dominate a country. By the way, he even composes sarcastic poems. I'm really confused, how could this seventeen-year-old boy be filled with so many odd things? And it is this seventeen-year-old guy who looks as if he wants eat us when he casts his eyes upon us. I have never seen such possessive eyes. Bastard. Too bad. Mu Yu Dai grinded her teeth, and made an action of cutting in the air, I would let him know how capable I am. Till your martial spirit is back, ha, huh, what's the big deal to let him look at us? We don't lose anything. Also Zhao Xian and Hu Long, the cowards, pretend to not be ogling at my ass when I am right in front of them. I despise them more. Compared to them, that bastard is bolder, I like it. Di Yalan laughed loudly. You are trying to seduce him. Mu Yu Dai smirked, he is still a kid. Don't seduce him. Have you seen any kid who gives that kind of look? Di Yalan lowered her voice, I am guessing that he is older than he looks. Maybe he had adopted some secret skill to make himself look young. Maybe it's a special secret martial spirit. Could be. Seems we have to be careful. Mu Yu Dai pondered, and then nodded slowly. Bang! Shi Yen was sprawled on his back. He was totally exhausted. He asked in a raucous voice, how many laps? Fifteen. Luo Hao answered with a complex look. You made actions of jumping and rolling during the fifteen laps, which made the pressure much bigger. Young man, you really, can bear that? Well, we will know tomorrow. Shi Yen found it even impossible to speak. In the past three days, he trained in whenever he had free time. After the arduous training, the meridians in his chest and waist could easily release negative energy at his will, which made him pine away a lot. He almost trained every part of his body to the most, but the hardest part, was his brain. At night, he would ask Luo how to lay the quintuple gravitational field, then he could steel himself under the massive stress. Three days. In those short three days, he broke his limit from 11 laps to 15 laps. While running, he also increased the hardness as he jumped and rolled, to consume more energy. By undergoing this intensive training, he found his body becoming much more powerful than before. His hands, feet, ribs, muscles and entrails all became stronger. Every morning, when he woke from his training, 
his body would be full of explosiveness, and he could jump several meters higher in normal gravity. Even his hands and feet became more agile. He could feel the progress every day clearly, thus he continued the training, and wrecked himself crazily. He steeled himself in such strenuous way that his ability increased rapidly, while his profound chi condensed even faster as well. Ao. Ao. There came a weird sound from far away. Luo Hao turned pale and cried out, It's the level, for demon beast, fire snake. A fire snake is very tough. They don't usually go out at night. Someone must have annoyed them. Uncle Luo. Zhao Xian and Hu Long hurried over, looking anxious. What's up? Lu Hao yelled. A troop of warriors are hunting the fire snake, and the latter are approaching toward us. The warriors are hell-bent, thus the fire snakes are totally irritated. Zhao Xian was in a panic. Shit! Luo Hao took off the broadsword on his shoulder, and said, Take care of Dai. Then he dashed away. Shi Yen, who was suffering all over, sat up immediately and began to operate his profound qi. Eyes lit and cool-minded, he silently gazed in the direction of Luo Hao, you're tuning in to the Han Li's Wuxia Adventures YouTube channel. Don't forget to subscribe and join us on this journey to catch the most captivating stories. Chapter 23 the Tush Mercenary Union. Chapter 23 Tush Mercenary Union. Zhao Xian and Zhao Long dashed toward the bush and encircled Mu Yu Dai. Mu Yu Dai, who had been hiding in the bushes for a long time, stood up ashamed. She took a quick glance at Shi Yen while blushing, and guessed she had lost face. But soon she found her assumption incorrect, for Shi Yen didn't even pay attention to her. Instead, he was glaring at the direction of Luo Hao, like a wary beast. After a speedy big circulation cycle by Shi Yen, the pain had reduced bit by bit. Looking serious, Shi Yen tried to recover while focusing on Luo Hao. Go after it. The fire snake looks very weak now. Catch it. Don't let it go. Fire the arrows. Quick. Shoo. Shu. From the woods not far away, came shouts and wrangles. Arrows flew fast in the air, chasing their targets. Hu. All of a sudden, there was a fire in the woods. The fierce fire covered the area in no time, and heavy smoke rose quickly and twined around the trees, making people unable to breathe. Kakaka. Bang bang bang. Bang. The sound of trees exploding, flying arrows, and fighters on the move, all came at the same time from that brook. A fierce battle was going on in the woods. Someone's there. An unfriendly shout came from the woods, you want to steal our success. Don't get it wrong. I just don't want the fire snake to hurt my people, so I simply stopped it from running that way. It was Luo Hao's voice. He seemed to have a dispute with someone far away. Humph. We, the Tush Mercenary Union, have kept an eye on this fire snake for half a month, you'd better not get involved. I said, I'm not interested in a level, for demon beast. Luo Hao explained. Uncle Luo is having words with someone, let's go and see. Mu Yu Dai raised her head from the bushes and frowned. She was a little worried since she didn't know what was happening there. Yes, let's go. Hu Long grunted. I have heard of the Tush Mercenary Union. They have a very bad reputation. We can't let them take advantage of Uncle Luo. Then let's hurry. Hearing that, Mu Yu Dai began to panic more. Okay. Zhao Xian nodded and said to Hu Long and Di Yalan, You still need to encircle Miss Mu when we reach there. Put her safety in the first place, even during fights. Rubbish. We all know this. Di Yalan was getting impatient. While muttering, the four quietly rushed toward Luo Hao. Shi Yen was not at all worried. He stood up after a few minutes. Feeling the vibrancy of his profound qi in the meridians, he at first moved his hands and feet slowly in order to make sure that they were still flexible after the fatigue. 
Then he followed the four people at leisure. Whoa! One man yelled in surprise, beautiful girls, ah, uh, there are two beautiful girls. I have lingered here for two months and have never seen such beautiful girls. Captain, you had promised that you would let us be satisfied. Don't go back on your word. Shut up. They are unavailable. Shi Yen walked up slowly, and began to look around with a rigid face. On the ground, was an eight-meter-long huge snake which had patterns of fire all over its body. Its tail was blazing and its body was covered with arrows. Meanwhile, a large quantity of blood was flowing out of the wound between its eyes. Eight mercenaries, in warrior uniforms, were standing around the fire snake. They looked robust and rough, and each of them got a tattoo of tush on their left arm. All of them were at least nascent realm. The captain's short brown hair stood like steel needles. There was a long scar on his left cheek which extended to his neck, making him look extremely savage. When Shi Yen arrived, those mercenaries were staring at Mu Yu Dai and Di Yalan with lustful eyes. They looked rather infatuated. However, the captain was not looking at the girls at all, but exchanging glances with Luo Hao. The captain's right hand was at the cuff, where silver light was glowing now and then. He was prepared to have a fight. Go home and look at your mama. Under those mercenaries' salacious eyes, Di Yalan couldn't help cursing them. Ha! This woman has a fiery temper. I love it. An uncivilized mercenary with a bare and hairy chest burst into laughter. He patted his thigh and shouted, Captain. I want this woman. Son of a bitch. Di Yalan drew out the sword beside her waist and posed to fight, come on. Let me see if you are a real man. Ha, huh, here I am. That big guy was joyful and was about to rush forward. Tomu. Bernard shouted, then he lowered his voice, don't make a fuss. Everything is negotiable. Okay, Captain. That man with hairy chest, whose name was Tomu, smirked and shook his legs to Di Yalan, and laughed cunningly, bitch, you will know how manly I am when we are naked. I will cut off your balls. Di Yalan shot back. Disgusted, Mu Yu Dai frowned but didn't utter a word. She had gotten used to such remarks. Who let you come here? Luo Hao got a little worried. He knew those mercenaries well. These mercenaries, who stayed here to kill demon beasts, were leading an extremely dangerous life. They could be killed by demon beasts at any time. Under that stress, they didn't care much about morals or laws, and did a lot of nasty things. Mu Yu Dai and Di Yalan were both pretty, and prettiness was the rarest thing in this area. The soft bodies of these pretty girls were the best comfort for those brutal mercenaries, so Luo Hao got a bad feeling at the sight of these men. Shi Yen came up and stood beside Luo Hao silently, and began to observe the Tush mercenary union. Tomu. The scar-faced captain of the Tush mercenary union, Bernard, yelled out viciously, take the things. At the same time, he was gazing at Luo Hao and Shi Yen with cold eyes, silver light glowing from the cuff. Yes, Captain. Tumu stopped teasing Di Yalan and commanded his people to move. Thus, three mercenaries walked up with daggers. They operated on the fire snake with blood all over their bodies. Ripping the skin, gouging the eyes, pulling out the tusks. They were doing it carefully and skillfully. Bernard and the rest of the mercenaries kept staring at Luo Hao and others. They were all ready to assault them once Luo Hao made any move. Looking rigid, Luo Hao held his glowing broadsword and said, We don't have a slightest interest in the fire snake. You are busy, we are going. Luo Hao knew Bernard was tough, so he don't want to ask for trouble. To bring Mu Yu Dai to a safe place was most important. Seeing they were leaving, Bernard was a little stunned, as he called out, wait. Luo Hao got serious as he turned around. He said, hey buddies, I don't want to have a dispute with you guys. You guys don't go too far either. Yeah well, Bernard smirked, the muscles on his face relaxing, friend, you got us wrong. 
I just want to make a deal with you. Nothing else. What deal? Luo Hao was surprised. What about one fire snake's eye, three tusks, and two meters snake skin for the two women? Bernard pointed at Mu Yu Dai and Di Yalan and smiled, my people haven't touched women for a long time. They need to be satisfied. All women here have a price, and my offer is quite fair. What do you think? F asterisk asterisk asterisk. Hu Long's eyes were almost on fire. Zhao Xian grunted. Mu Yu Dai bit her teeth as well, while Di Yalan waved her sword and shouted, Come if you dare. Only Shi Yen kept silent as he gazed at the captain. Luo Hao stretched out his hand to stop Di Yalan and shook his head to her. Then he turned around and said to Bernard, I'm sorry, they are my friends, not my possessions. They can't be traded. Well, never mind. Bernard nodded, and said casually, see you. See you. Luo Hao looked into his eyes, then yelled, let's go. Luo Hao glared at Di Yalan, suggesting her to keep silent. Zhao Xian and Hu Long were both furious, but they could do nothing after seeing Luo Hao's eyes. They had to encircle Mu Yu Dai and leave. Shi Yen touched his own nose and left without a word too. Captain, the same as usual. After Luo Hao and others disappeared into the woods, Tomu giggled, we know what type of woman you like, so we won't touch that little girl. But that hot bitch, Captain, you have to give her to us. Bernard's eyes got colder and colder, and he nodded gently, collect the things on the snake first, and then do what we usually do. Got it. Tumu smirked, that woman wanted to cut my cock. I would f asterisk 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 her to death later. She is a beautiful flower with thorns, and though lower than you, she is at the third sky of the nascent realm. You need to be careful. Don't fail miserably in an easy task. Bernard grunted. Remember to kill those men first, don't merely indulge yourselves in the woman. Be cautious, don't let anyone run away. Yes, Captain. You're tuning into the Han Li's Wuxia Adventures YouTube channel. Don't forget to subscribe and join us on this journey to catch the most captivating stories. Chapter 24, Trouble Chapter 24, Trouble Uncle Luo, why are we retreating? As they were marching, Di Yalan cut tree trunks with her sword and was angry, how dare that bastard tease Miss Mu and me. Shit. Nothing would have happened if you two didn't show up. Now we've gotten ourselves into trouble. Alas. Luo Hao sighed and said, stop babbling. Let's leave. Hopefully we can escape it. Uncle Luo, we've already left, what's wrong? Mu Yu Dai got confused. It's more complicated than what you think. Luo Hao shook his head, none of those mercenaries are good men. That captain was so salacious when he looked at you that he wouldn't let it go easily. The four mercenaries operating on the snake appeared to be indifferent when we left, but they were much more interested in you, thus it's unreasonable that they would give up. They must know their captain's plan well. Mu Yu Dai's pretty face turned pale, Uncle Luo, are you guessing that they would pursue us? Not a guess. I'm very sure about it. Luo Hao sighed again, they didn't take action at once, for they were considering the materials on the demon snake. Other warriors and mercenaries may have come up to collect their prey when they were fighting with us. So surely they will chase us after they get the material on the snake. The Tush mercenary union have a really bad reputation. I have heard about them doing a lot of bad things. Uncle Luo is right. Hu Long added. Uncle Luo, sorry, we were worried about you. Mu Yu Dai was in low mood. I understand. Luo Hao replied. However, he suddenly stopped and put Mu Yu Dai down gently. Thus, Shi Yen stopped as well. He asked while frowning, what happened? They are pursuing us. Luo Hao glanced at Shi Yen in appreciation and nodded, replying with a rigid face, must be them. Uncle Luo, what should we do now? Hu Long was furious and he yelled, 
they went too far. Let's fight against them like hell. Luo Hao looked serious. He thought quickly and ordered, D. Yalin, carry Dai and go first, and send signals to us all the way. Young man, you go with them, and be careful. Choose untraversed regions, and don't get into high-level demon beast areas. What about you? Shi Yen asked calmly. We three will stay. Without Dai amongst us, we can do sneak attacks easily. After delaying them, we will catch up. Those guys won't fight with us if they don't see the girls. They should stop soon. Luo Hao replied fast. Got it. Shi Yen nodded and smiled lightheartedly, don't worry uncle, where there are these two pretty girls, there will be me. Okay, go. Luo Hao replied. Di Yalin wanted to stay and fight, but she had to compromise under Luo Hao's firm gaze. She stamped on the ground with regret and crouched to carry Mu Yu Dai. Then she ran to the thickest part of the forest. After some hesitation, Shi Yen took out a paper bag from his bag and put it in Luo Hao's hand, I got this poisonous powder by accident. It is called Seven Snake Saliva, which is made from poison fluid of seven types of snakes. It's very easy to use. Just wipe it on the weapon, and when it cuts even a little it will take effect. Before Luo Hao could say anything, Shi Yen smirked and advanced in the direction of Di Yalin. Uncle Luo, wasn't it too mean? A warrior has his own self-esteem. To use poison is contemptible. Zhao Xian frowned and looked at the poison powder in Luo Hao's hand with contempt, then he murmured, We know nothing about that boy, and he's got so many vicious things. It's dangerous to let him stay with Miss Mu. Zhao Xian, there are not many rules here, so cut the crap. We would have been dead bodies if it weren't for his bone-chilling powder, and you wouldn't be here talking about righteousness. Luo Hao reproached angrily and said, Everybody gets to keep some powder, but don't use it too early in case it irritates those mercenaries. If it gets worse, don't hesitate to wipe it on weapons. You can reproach that boy again only when you two are still alive, understand? Got it. In the woods. Bernard and his seven people were flying fast in the woods with cold faces and obscene smiles. Shoo, shoo, shoo. Arrows flew out from the woods one after another, hard and quick, which made the mercenaries stop and react. Bernard stopped at once and smirked. His right hand in the cuff finally stretched out, it was a shining silver iron hand. Rays of silver light exploded as the iron hand stretched out, and the light then divided into seven crescent knives in the air, and flew toward Luo Hao's hiding spot with a rush. Ka ka ka. Tree branches in the woods exploded, and fell one after another as the knives flew by. The knives let out frightening silver lights and bombarded heavily in the place where Luo Hao hid himself. Bang bang bang. An ancient tree collapsed suddenly after being cut by the knives. Luo Hao's figure showed up for a moment and disappeared into the woods again quickly. Tumu, go ahead with Kinmo. We will take care of this side. Bernard smiled cunningly with his heavy face, and added, the superior warriors are all here, while the women and that boy have run away. Remember, I need the women alive. If you kill them, you won't get even one crystal coin. Be at ease, Captain. I promise, I will bring that woman to you clean and beautiful, so that you can make her serve you however as you like. Tumu laughed loudly, Kinmo, let's go first. Ha! That hot chick, ha, uh, I will have her first. You are lucky today, you can taste her after me. Yeah, I can't wait anymore. The ugly mercenary with pimples all over his face laughed too as he advanced with Tumu. It's bad. Luo Hao was stunned, and was about to send a signal. He didn't presume that Bernard was so experienced with this kind of situation. Bernard saw through Luo Hao's plan at once and sent people to chase Di Yalin pointedly. Stay here. Bernard sneered as he rushed to Luo Hao, my friend, you wanted to delay us, didn't you? Now, I won't leave, so don't you leave as well. Let's trade blows and exercise our muscles. 
As soon as Bernard moved, the other mercenaries separated two to search for Hu Long and Zhao Exian's traces. Carrying Mu Yu Dai on her back, Di Yalan shuttled back and forth in the woods. Every time she touched the ground, her well-shaped long legs would pedal on the earth and thus her bonny body bounced several meters high, like a female leopard pursuing its prey. While up in the air, her short skirt under her armor flew with the wind, and her plump ass showed an attractive shape, looking extremely elastic. Shi Yan was staring at her figure joyfully and couldn't stop praising her hot body. No wonder those mercenaries couldn't get rid of Di Yalan in their mind. Little bastard, stop looking at my ass. Take care of the surroundings. Keep an eye on any demon beast trails around here. Di Yalan seemed to have a pair of eyes on her back, as she shouted while running. It's fine. Shi Yen broadened his mouth, there are no trails of demon beasts for the time being, but it seems that someone is chasing us. I seem to hear their light steps. Someone's after us. Di Yalan was stunned, it couldn't be. The three including Uncle Luo are there. They weren't able to stop those crazy dogs. Shi Yen then stopped, bent down, and leaned his ear against the ground. He said with a serious face, Uncle Luo wasn't able to stop all the crazy dogs. Two of them are almost here. Di Yalan was astonished as she stopped in front, she observed with a pale face, Kid, carry Miss Mu and leave fast. I will stay and fight with them. No, I will stay. Shi Yen shook his head, took a deep breath, answering in a low voice, I was just thinking about testing the results of my recent training. Keep going, I will catch up. Hmm, by the way, I will leave some signs as well, in case Uncle Luo Hao loses trace of us after dumping those mercenaries. You, on Di Yalan's back, Mu Yu Dai turned her head to Shi Yen and gazed at him numbly. Then a glow crossed her eyes, and she said with a complicated look on her pretty face, you could have gotten out of this trouble, originally. I know. Shi Yen smiled, but for you, I'm in. I still owe you a lot. Once I pay it back, I will leave even if you ask me to stay. Waving his hand, he urged Di Yalan, Sister, what the hell are you doing? Move. Di Yalan felt it a little heartbreaking to see him again, so she turned her head away and said, Little bastard, live on happily. If you can catch up again, I, I will allow you to touch my, but. In an instant, she stamped on the ground and dashed out rapidly. Ha huh, then keep yourself clean and wait for me. Shi Yen laughed and shouted to her, I will be back soon. Di Yalan quivered, and almost fell. She gritted her teeth and cursed in her mind with blushed face, this damn bastard. You're tuning into the Han Li's Wuxia Adventures YouTube channel. Don't forget to subscribe and join us on this journey to catch the most captivating stories. Chapter 25, Ghost Chapter 25, Ghost With his dagger, Shi Yen first engraved ugly patterns of butterflies on two tree trunks, then he climbed into one of the trees, cut down a branch as thick as an arm, chopped it into five pieces, sharpened one end of each piece, and wiped the seven snake saliva onto the sharpened ends casually. It took him two minutes to do all these things. After two minutes, Tumu and Kinmo, the two mercenaries from the Tush Mercenary Union, showed up as expected. Tumu and Kinmo didn't even take Shi Yen and the two women seriously. They were still discussing how to enjoy Di Yalan with salacious faces, while shuttling in the woods. Shu! Shu! Sharpened branches went through dense leaves and flew toward Tumu and Kinmo. Tumu didn't care about it at all. He wielded his axe aimlessly and chopped two tree branches down, then he laughed happily, look at this guy, too shallow, uh. He treated us with these tree branches to lose our face. Poor guy. Kinmo shook his head and sneered. Shoo. 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 Another three tree branches came over mightily. Tumu got a little impatient that he drew a semicircle in the air with his axe which was as long as an arm, and three tree branches fell on the ground in the silver light. Shi Yen showed up from among the bushes slowly and stared at them coldly, 
you two will fight together, or come up one by one. Narrowing his eyes, Tumu raised his head and examined Shi Yen. Then he shook his head disappointedly, a young kid. Of the nascent realm at most. You talk big but have limited ability. Sorry, but I'm not interested. After saying that, Tumu turned his eyes away from Shi Yen and walked away with his voice, Kinmo, take care of it quickly. Catch up to me soon, or I will f asterisk 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 that bitch twice. Ha ha ha. Kinmo sniffed, then threw his huge wolf tooth stick onto the ground mightily, which stuck deep in the earth. Kid, come down, I won't use my weapon, and don't let me climb the tree to catch you. I'm in a hurry. Be quick. Yeah, I'm in a hurry too. Shi Yen replied with indifference and calmness in his eyes. Then he jumped down the ancient tree at once, and threw his dagger out with all might into the earth beside that wolf tooth stick. Bang! Shi Yen stood ten meters away in front of Kinmo, raised his hands and waved at Kinmo, I won't use a weapon either. Hey kid, you're rather audacious. Kinmo broadened his mouth as all the pimples gathered on his face. With vicious eyes, he rushed toward Shi Yen at once. All of a sudden, Kinmo's hands swelled and blue veins popped on his fists. All his fist strikes were so heavy-handed that they were making a hoo-hoo sound in the air. His aggressive assault created numerous images of the fists. After five steps, there appeared dozens of fist prints ahead of Kinmo. Mortal level martial skill. Shi Yen narrowed his eyes and began to operate his profound chi calmly, clearing his mind of any other thoughts. There was only the fist images in his eyes and only the idea of kill Kinmo in his mind. Bang! With a heavy shake in his mind, he suddenly entered a different world. His eyes, ears and body suddenly got much more sensitive than before. All of the surroundings grew much clearer. Gazing at Kinmo, he could specifically sense the speed and rate at which Kinmo's profound chi flew in his arm. The fist images which had pervaded the air disappeared in an instant, and the air got clearer. Only Kinmo's waving fists were left in his eyes. Furthermore, he could even see the path his fists were traversing. After taking a deep breath, Shi Yen shouted and his arms contracted and dried at a speed which could be seen by naked eye. Soon his arms were twined with vague, white smoke. At the same time, from his neck, his skin began to petrify into grey rock, which looked as hard as iron. Dim black light spilled from his skin and covered all of his skinny body. Kinmo's iron fists, with the power to shatter rocks, struck toward Shi Yan's chest. The twisted, and after being struck by Kinmo's iron fists, it turned into dark light spots, exploding in an instant. Kinmo's fists went through the, though with less power, and struck Shi Yan's chest heavily. Bang! Car! The sound of striking and bone breaking came at the same moment. Kinmo's face twisted at once. The nasty pain on his fists made Kinmo realize that it was not Shi Yan's chest, but his fists that had been splintered. Waving the painful arms with a hideous face, Kinmo looked at Shi Yan, who was as cold as a rock, rather terrified. He seemed to remember something at that moment, thus shouted, Petrifaction Marshal Spirit from the Shur family. You are from the Shur family of the Merchant Union? Brilliant. Shur Yen smiled with coldness. Kinmo realized that he was at a disadvantage and thus tried to run, but it was too late since he was too close to Shur Yen. Shur Yen stretched out his hand like lightning and held Kinmo's neck. The white fog around his arm, containing all the negative emotions, flew into Kinmo's body, all at once. Kinmo was so frightened that he felt himself fall into hell and screamed while quivering, No. 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 Kinmo kept screaming hard and waved his iron fists aimlessly, as if he couldn't see a thing, and tried to defend from the ghosts which were approaching him. Shi Yen had released his hand a long time ago. The white smoke had disappeared and his face had returned normal. He was counting the time in his mind. One. Two, three, four, five. While counting, Shi Yen walked leisurely to where his dagger was struck. 
he pulled it out and walked over to Kinmo with light steps. When Shi Yen counted to seventeen, Kinmo seemed to be calming down gradually. His eyes were becoming clear and he was about to come around. Seventeen seconds was far more than enough to kill a person dozens of times. Nodding his head lightly, Shi Yen got to know more about the situation. He moved like lightning and slashed across Kinmo's neck with precision. Blood jetted out of his neck as Kinmo finally came back to his senses. He stared at Shi Yen in hatred and fell down with regret. Squatting down beside Kinmo, Shi Yen wiped off the blood on the dagger with Kinmo's coat, and examined Kinmo's body. He found some food, hundreds of purple crystal coins and the two sharp tusks of the fire snake. After putting these things into his bag without any hesitance, Shi Yen took a deep breath. He felt Kinmo's profound chi had all went into his own meridians. Then he stood up and murmured, someone at the second sky of the nascent realm would lose their senses for seventeen seconds under the negative power of. This martial skill is really too weird. Maybe, the more the negative power is concentrated, the stronger its power. He talked to himself for a while. Then he pulled himself together, took a deep breath and rushed in the direction where Tomo ran to. Bitch. Too damn hot. Ha. But I love it. Tomo was laughing happily and having a fight with Di Yalan with his axe. Mu Yudai's eyes were cold. Cuddling her zither, she looked panicked and seemed to make a difficult decision. The heavy axe looked light as a feather fan in Tomo's hand. As the axe shone now and then, Di Yalan's short sword was at a disadvantage. Once the short sword touched the axe, Di Yalan's thin body would shake. Apparently, Tumu had a much stronger profound chi than Di Yalan. Tumu's axe left shadows in the air as he wielded it, and the shadows entangled Di Yalan, like rings. Between the light reflected from the axe, Di Yalan's long hair flew up and down, and her short skirt was shredding, through which her thighs showed up now and then. Bitch, you know my ability, huh? Don't worry, you will know soon that my best thing is not my martial skill. Ha ha ha. Tumu laughed with joy as he planned to defeat Di Yalan slowly. He was teasing her deliberately. Di Yalan was very furious, but she couldn't talk back and could only defend with every effort. Sister, need any help? Shi Yan's casual banter came from the woods all of a sudden. The next moment, Shi Yan showed up with the dagger in his hand. He wandered his eyes over Di Yalan's thighs and butt, visible through the cracks on her skirt for a while and praised, round and smooth, plump and cute. Too good. Terrific. Di Yalan was very surprised. Since she had no time to talk back now, she took a step back and answered loudly, You bastard. How did you survive? Tumu's face was frozen and pale. He didn't continue to chase after Di Yalan, but turned his head to Shi Yan and asked in a low voice, Is Kinmo dead? What do you think? Holding his dagger, Shi Yan walked toward him step by step, wearing a mysterious smile. As he was advancing, his arms dried up again. The negative power flowed out from his pores, and twined around his arms again. Kinmo's profound chi was not all purified, but as Shi Yen began to operate, Kinmo's despair and hatred before his death suddenly gushed out from his meridians, forming the hideous shadow image in front of Shi Yen, which looked just the same as Kinmo. Kinmo. Tumu was so astonished that his robust body quivered. Impossible. In front of Shi Yen, Kinmo's ghostly shadow which was as light as a feather was rattling his saber. The dim eyes which were filled with hatred, showed that he would even want to kill all the people in the world. Di Yalan and Mu Yu Dai were astonished too. With their thin bodies shaking, they couldn't help screaming, what the hell is that? Even Shi Yen himself was astounded. Looking at the ghostly shadow in front of him, he didn't know what to do. Kinmo. Kinmo. What happened to you? Under Kinmo's eyes which were full of unforgettable hatred, Tomu stepped back and shouted, I'm your companion. You enemy is behind you. Tomu's cry reminded Shi Yen. His will changed. 
Now there was only one thought in his mind, to kill Tomu. The negative power around his arm shot out like a weird, pale snake to Tomu. Kinmo's shadow seemed to be stimulated by the negative power and flew lightly towards him and brutally caught him. Kill! Shi Yen yelled and rushed out. Surprised, Di Yalan raised her sword and struck toward Tomu too, you're tuning into the Han Li's Wuxia Adventures YouTube channel. Don't forget to subscribe and join us on this journey to catch the most captivating stories. Chapter 26, The Wager Chapter 26, The Wager Tumu's face looked gloomy as he watched Kinmo's face with astonishment. He was frightened. That shadow did not have any substance but was like a ghost, which made Tumu, a brave and battle-wise mercenary, apprehensive. He took a step back from this abnormal thing and tried to analyze the situation. Shi Yen immediately knew that Tumu was scared, as he stepped back. He took the right timing and rushed out with his dagger like a leopard. At the same time, he asked Di Yalan to fight together with him. Though Di Yalan was a little scared too, since she knew that ghostly shadow was released by Shi Yen, she plucked up courage to besiege Tumu. The pale, white light smoke, which contained refined negative power, began to intertwine Tumu. Kinmo's ghostly shadow was following it and went in front of Tumu at once. Tumu suddenly concentrated. Without any hesitation, he began to practice his dense profound chi of the third sky of the nascent realm with his secret formula. The profound chi gushed into his left hand and exploded into a red fire. In an instant, there appeared a red protective shield of concentrated pure profound chi in Tumu's left hand. That red protective shield was glowing with red light and letting out hot energy, though it was merely as big as a wash basin. This shield, created by pure profound chi, was apparently Tomu's vital martial skill, which required a lot of energy to operate. Just as the protective shield was produced, Tomu was already perspiring hard on his forehead. He must have consumed a lot of energy. The protective shield was sticking on Tomu's left hand. Seeing Shi Yan's negative power pouring toward him, Tomu immediately raised the shield to block the negative power in Kinmo's ghostly shadow. Che Yi Chi Chi that strip of white fog containing negative mood, along with Kinmo's ghostly shadow sparkled after bumping on the protective shield. In the pervading sparkles, the white fog faded away and the ghostly shadow seemed to be melting and dispersed into the air bit by bit. Noticing the shield could melt these two weird things, Tomu became a little relieved. He then sneered cunningly, Kid, let me see what else you've got. A cold, evil air dispersed from the sparkles with the continuous sound of chi chi. Unnoticed by Tomu, the air went into his body through his pores. After that sneer, Tomu's face turned dumb and panic welled up from his eyes. A bright light crossed Shi Yan's eyes. According to Tomu's facial expressions, though Tomu had tried to clear the negative power, he couldn't wipe it all away. Some of it had already invaded his mind. Take action. After a loud yell, Shi Yen sped up to his maximum speed. He appeared in front of Tomu all of a sudden, leaving a light shadow in the open air. The dagger, with glowing blue light, stabbed toward Tomu's neck with a rush, which looked as if it was lightning. The protective shield in Tomu's hand was getting hotter and hotter. The temperature almost woke Tomu up from the numbness. Tomu opened his eyes abruptly. How? Tumu hauled, thus he suppressed all the negative emotions which had invaded his mind, at the same time, he drew a circle in the air with his axe in the right hand. Kong Chang Shi Yan's dagger stabbed into the axe while a nasty explosion came out from the axe. To his surprise, it rushed towards Shi Yan's arm through the dagger. Shi Yan's arm became so numb that he realized Tumu's profound chi was very dense, Therefore he moved the dagger away from the axe quickly. Tomu didn't react to Shi Yen. Instead, he turned his body like wind and blocked Di Yalan's short sword which came behind him with his axe. He said with a cold face, I will f asterisk 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 you as hard as I can. Shi Yen grew rigid and the bloodthirstiness surged in his mind. 
wielding his dagger, his muscles on the legs began to contract slowly as well. Negative power gushed out from his pores on the legs, covering them in a pale fog. As his hands and feet all went through the changes, Shi Yen couldn't control his bloodthirstiness anymore. He was overwhelmed by the desire for killing, and his eyes were getting more and more red, while his expression became as hideous as a devil from hell. Even Mu Yu Dai who was beside him was so frightened that she covered her mouth with her hand. Ho ho ho. Shi Yan's breaths got heavier and heavier. He stomped and could feel endless power in his feet. His skinny body advanced ten meters in one second. Like a flying arrow. Fast and mighty. Tumu's axe flew swiftly in the air and made cracking sounds endlessly. It forced Di Yalan to retreat as her arms got more and more painful holding the short sword. She turned weaker and weaker under the severe attacks of Tumu's strong profound chi. A forceful, murderous air suddenly came from his back. Tumu had a hideous look in his eyes as he struck his axe again, making Di Yalan retreat while trembling. Bang! Tumu kicked his leg impatiently onto Di Yalan's smooth abdomen heavily and she was kicked about seven meters away. Di Yalan fell on ground on her back and she was bleeding severely from her mouth. Her profound chi was disordered and she lost all her strength at once. Tumu's kick contained a surging explosiveness as his profound chi exploded in an instant. He aimed to drain his fighting capacity slowly so that he could deal with Shi Yen. Turning around, Tumu brandished his axe with a vicious face. Kid, I'm gonna slice you into a hundred pieces. Shi Yen ran up like an arrow and with the help of his impulses, he shifted all of his profound chi into his dagger. As he brandished his dagger, the shadows of the dagger fell like raindrops, along with it, a cold vicious power was sent out from the dagger and enveloped Tumu. Humph! Tumu took a deep breath and began to wield the protective shield with his left hand. Warm wind flew out from the protective shield endlessly and drove the cold, vicious air away. Then he took up his axe and struck Shi Yan's dagger precisely. Bang! With the hard thump, Shi Yan felt a severe pain in his wrist, when his dagger suddenly flew out and fell down on the earth dozens meters away behind him. Tumu was having a hard time too. The power gushing out from Shi Yan's dagger was extremely vicious as well. As he defended from it, he retreated with a stagger. At the same time, an air of coldness, evil and panic, sprawled through his arms into the brain like a small snake and dragged him into a bloody atmosphere again. Shi Yan stood still as he saw Tumu eyes become perplexed and retreated staggering into the direction of Di Yalan. At that moment, his dagger was dozens of meters away behind him. He would miss the best timing if he went to pick up his dagger and rush to Tumu, maybe Tumu would have come to his senses by then. That will flash to cross in his mind like lightning and his eyes turned cold. Then he rushed to Tumu with all his strength and captured Tumu's waist with his arms. He pushed up with his legs and pushed Tumu toward Di Yalan with all might and yelled, Raise your sword. Stab. On hearing his shout, Di Yalan, who was lying on the ground exhausted, saw a huge dark shadow fall onto her. Without any hesitance, Di Yalan summoned all her strength and raised her short sword which was as long as her arm. Poo! As the sword stabbed into Tumu's heart, he woke up with a severe pain. He flailed crazily and tried hard to keep his balance. The sword stabbed into the back part of his heart thus his body tilted in the air, and he didn't fall onto Di Yalan immediately. With the support of the sword, Tumu kept that tilting position magically and didn't fall immediately, as if his legs had rooted in the ground. Tumu struggled with all his strength but only to find his hands held by Shi Yen tightly. Shi Yen looked rather cool, and he smirked, Wild dog, you are done. Keeping that position, Tumu shouted, Bastard. Let go of your hands. The sword stabbed me, it can also stab you. Let go of your hand. You want to die with me? Tumu was really tough and he could still raise his leg like lightning under this situation. He kicked his knees into Shi Yan's belly heavily. Shi Yan injected his profound chi crazily into his arms. 
since he couldn't activate them, he tried to use the petrifaction martial spirit. Tomu struck his knees into Shi Yen again and again. Under that heavy striking, the power of petrifaction seemed to be concentrated in Shi Yan's abdomen, while the other parts of his body turned normal. His abdomen grew gray and was as hard as stone. Under the attacks of Tomu, who was at the third sky of the nascent realm, Shi Yen could still support himself with the petrifaction martial spirit. Though he felt extreme pain in his abdomen, he didn't spit out blood and his defensive power became abnormally strong. Di Yalan who was under them then came to notice that Shi Yen and Tomu were hugging tightly. If she thrust her short sword toward them, or Tomu fell down heavily, the sword would go through Tomu's body, and then into Shi Yen's body, sticking them together. Knowing that Shi Yen would be stabbed along with Tomu, Di Yalan didn't dare act rashly, so she screamed, Bastard! Release! Wild dog, I'm shorter than you. But you will be the dead one, and I could only lose an arm at most. Shi Yen looked at him coldly with a smile. Then with Tomu's frightened eyes, he threw Tomu and himself with all his might onto Di Yalan. Pull! Pull! The sound of the weapon breaking the flesh and bone came one by one. Di Yalan was lying on her back, while Tomu was lying on her on his back, and Shi Yen on Tomu. The sword in her hand stabbed through both of them. It went through Tomu's heart, and then forced itself into Shi Yan's right shoulder. Tomu's heart was stabbed through. After several quivers, he died right away with an extremely terrified face. Though his shoulder was broken, Shi Yan looked hideous and still didn't let go of Tomu. After Tomu's profound chi spilled out of his body and flew into Shi Yan, the latter was convinced Tomu was dead. Then Shi Yen released his hands and laid his exhausted and soft body down, you're tuning into the Han Li's Wuxia Adventures YouTube channel. Don't forget to subscribe and join us on this journey to catch the most captivating stories. Chapter 27, Three Parties Meeted Chapter 27, The Three Parties Meet In the Woods The silver light on Bernard's iron hand flew like silk and intertwined together to form a dense, silver light net, which flew to cover Luo Hao. In the field, Luo Hao walked swiftly. He drew many odd arcs in the air with his broadsword to tear the light net in front of him into pieces. Bernard looked normal and didn't show the slightest bit of fear. Yet he still kept a distance from Luo Hao and kept intertwining the silver light to form silver light nets one after another, throwing them towards Luo Hao. The silver light net was not influenced by the gravitational field. It was still floating in the air, and those which were torn by Luo Hao's broadsword stuck together again while floating and came around Luo Hao's body. Seen from afar, Luo Hao seemed to be in the very center of a broken spider. In the shuttling of his broadsword, those light nets were torn and reconnected again. At the same time, Bernard still kept a proper distance from Luo Hao and never stopped producing more light nets to envelop Luo Hao, who was surrounded by more and more light nets. Bernard didn't let go of Luo Hao, apparently, he didn't need to use as much effort, as he smirked to Luo Hao. My friend, why do you have to fight with me face to face? We just want the two women. My people have already followed them. Sure enough, the two women must have been taken away by my people. And you can't escape from my. The results is very clear. Don't waste your time. If they have an accident, I swear, I will sweep away your Tush mercenary union. With a twisted face, Luo Hao replied while in the light net, I will spend the rest of my life chasing you Tush mercenary union, till the last of you is killed. Bernard was surprised, he took a deep breath and nodded, it seems like I have to kill you now. Captain. Captain. There came a surprised cry, Jork's dead. He was just cut by a sword and was poisoned to death. Bernard became furious, as he shouted, Don't be lenient. Kill them as soon as possible. Shit. Poison. Cut them into pieces and feed them to the demon beasts. Don't leave their bodies. The mercenaries yelled together and began to chase Zhao Xian and Hu Long at the same time. 
Bernard was so angry that he operated the with all his might to cover the whole area around Luohau, making a final bid for victory. Suddenly, lightning which was as thick as a finger turned into another huge net and fell from the sky, flying towards Luohau. Luohau was shocked and he turned pale at once. Though he tried hard to wave his broadsword, he couldn't cut down the new net. There were ten finger-like lightnings glowing an odd light as they twined like magic snakes. Frightened, Luohau immediately wielded his broadsword with all his profound chi. Then the broadsword generated a white light which grew into circles and entangled Luohau. Chi. Chi. Those finger-like lightnings came toward Luohau. As they bumped into the white circles, electric flashes exploded at once. Luohau's loss of profound chi sped up several times compared to before. Under the fierce lightning, his energy was consumed quickly and his face turned extremely pale. A sharp sword suddenly appeared above his head, filled with the severe smell of slaughter, and struck on the circle surrounding Luohau's body. Bang! Luohau's body shook greatly and crimson blood gushed out of his mouth. He staggered and stepped back. Bernard's took advantage of this to wrap Luohau tightly so that he couldn't move at all. Wang! The sharp sword went through Luohau's body, and that crescent emissary with a pale mask on his face finally showed up. Alongside him was Imo Chauga from the Mo family, who walked out from behind an ancient tree with lightning playing between his fingers. Pooh! 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 The crescent emissary got a brutal look in his eyes, as his sharp sword went in and out of Luohau's body thrice. The gravitational field faded slowly. Uncle Luo. Zhao Xian's eyes turned red and he cried in deep grief. Arrows flew toward Zhao Xian one after another. His body became like a hedgehog and he fell on ground and died with regret. On Hu Long's side, arrows were also flying around him. But they seemed to be not as accurate because instead of killing Hu Long, they blocked the people from the Tush mercenary union who were chasing Hu Long. Seizing this opportunity, Hu Long ran away crazily in the wood with red eyes. Uncle Luo and Zhao Xian are dead. Only Miss Mu can avenge them. I must tell Miss Mu. Chase. The people from the Tush mercenary union yelled and began to chase, but only to find arrows falling down from the sky and blocking their way. They turned rigid and realized someone didn't want them to chase Hu Long, so they searched for that shooter with vicious eyes. Some people with pale masks appeared in the woods, and there were some warriors from the M.O. family among them, they were all having arrows with them and looked serious. Why did you help me kill him? Frowning, Bernard asked M.O. Chauga and the other star emissary, I don't know you too, do I? What do you want from me for killing him? We were not helping you. The star emissary walked up and glanced him with cold eyes, Luo Hao was an enemy of the dark world that we were chasing him all this time. It's you who helped us. Mo Chauga was standing aside and not in a hurry to come up. He frowned and asked, Emissary, you said this is the strongest guy among those who were protecting that bastard. Since he is dead, we don't need to waste time anymore. Hmm. The star emissary nodded, don't worry. I left some dark moon fragrance on Hu Long and ordered my people to let him go deliberately to become a guide for us. Later we can follow the trail left by the dark moon fragrance and we can find the people we want. Good. Mo Chauga started to smile, it's not far from our merchant union. After it's done, would you like to have a cup of tea with the Mo family and discuss about the details of our cooperation, emissary? No problem. The crescent emissary nodded. In the past couple of days, the Crescent Emissary from the Dark World had already hooked up with Mo Chauga, and they had come to a secret agreement. Why did you kill this guy? Bernard waved his hand and soon his mercenaries crowded around him. For a teenage girl, and a skinny boy. Mo Chauga smiled, I've known the Tush Mercenary Union for a long time. Now I know you why you really deserve such a reputation. I'm M.O. Chauga from the M.O. family of the Merchant Union. I wonder if you are interested in doing business with the M.O. family. What kind of business? 
Bernard frowned. Of course money earning kind. Ha! If you are interested, we can discuss the details. You will not regret it. Mo Chowga laughed. Let's talk about it later. Bernard paused, and continued, if there wasn't an accident, my people must have beaten the people you want. We can't do it for nothing. You take the teenage girl and the boy, and we, the Tush Mercenary Union, get that hot woman mercenary, okay? Bernard knew they were tough people, and both the Dark World or M.O. family from the Merchant Union have a huge influence. The Crescent Emissary and M.O. Chauga, who were in lead, were both at the Disaster Realm, not any lower than him, and those two had come to an agreement. After calculating, Bernard was sure that he could not compete with their joint power and had to step back. M.O. Chauga didn't reply, but looked to the Crescent Emissary from the Dark World. The Crescent Emissary's eyes flashed and he nodded slowly, no problem. Well, let's go get them, seeing him nodding, Bernard became relieved. He had seen the brutality of those two people and he didn't dare ask for trouble. Mu Yudai crouched and bound up the wound for Shi Yen carefully. With a rigid face, Shi Yen was silent. He sat on the ground and examined the change in the wound on his shoulder, and the purification of Tomu's profound qi in his meridians. He was so focused that he didn't even take a glimpse at Mu Yudai. Sometimes he is so lustful, and sometimes he is so righteous, too weird. Mu Yudai questioned secretly, as generally in recent days, Shi Yen looked at her so audaciously without any disguise. But now they were so close and could even smell the scent on each other, Shi Yen didn't even look at her. She was rather confused. Mu Yu Dai was so perplexed and she was not sure about Shi Yen's real personality. Narrowing his eyes, Shi Yen concentrated on the changes occurring inside his body. The cells of the wound on his shoulder were very alive. Without doing anything, he could sense they were recovering gradually with the aid of the immortal martial spirit. After Tomu's profound chi was purified in his meridians, the odd negative emotions were generated secretly within them. After operating, he didn't have the slightest amount of strength in his limbs and they ached a lot, seemingly not recovering in a short time. This familiar side effect made him uncomfortable but he could do nothing. Di Yalan, who was resting not far from them, regained her spirit and began to search Tomu's body. One minute later, Di Yalan walked to Mu Yu Dai and Shi Yen with a little bag. There is some food on this guy, some demon beast materials, and three star bombs. We don't need the demon beast materials, but the star bombs are rather brutal. Star bombs, flash crossed Shi Yan's eyes and he stared at the green balls which were as big as fists. He asked with a lot of interest, what are they for? It will explode once shaken and produce starry blades, which are very sharp and would fly in all directions. The impact is so strong that even a profound chi shield from a human realm warrior couldn't prevent it. It's a type of brutal treasure and is very expensive. These three may cost five thousand of black crystal coins. D. Yalin explained. Too brutal. Give it to me. Shi Yen stretched out his hand and asked Di Yalan to hand it to him casually. Tada! Tat Ada! Heavy steps came suddenly. Di Yalan got pale and held her short sword cautiously. Shi Yen pushed Mu Yu Dai away a little rudely. He stood up with a grunt with the dagger in his hand, and began to stare at the direction where the sound came. Hu Long, with bloody eyes and blood on his chest, staggered toward them. At the sight of Di Yalan, who long burst into tears and cried, Uncle Luo and Zhao Xian died. Miss Mu, they died tragically. You must avenge them. You're tuning into the Han Li's Wuxia Adventures YouTube channel. Don't forget to subscribe and join us on this journey to catch the most captivating stories. Chapter 28 The Blast Chapter 28 The Blast Mu Yu Dai's slim body shook and she leaned against the tree trunk weakly, tears welling up in her eyes and flowing down her face. All along the way, Luo Hao and Zhao Xian had protected her wholeheartedly. 
she had only survived until now because of Luo Hao who was like her spirit. Hearing that Luo Hao and Zhao Xian were both dead, Mu Yu Dai was filled with so much grief that she didn't even want to think about escaping. Di Yalan's eyes were almost on fire as she clenched her teeth and asked in trembling voice, Who the hell did that? Hu Long choked with sobs, and quickly explained the details, then he added, Apart from the Dark World and the Tush Mercenary Union, there were also people from the M.O. family from the Merchant Union. That guy released the power of lightning which was not refined from profound chi, it should be the lightning martial spirit of the M.O. family. The Tush Mercenary Union Dark World M.O. Family D. Yalan clenched her teeth and uttered word by word. Then she yelled, they all must pay for that. Shi Yen frowned as he heard about the lightning martial spirit. He realized quickly that the target of M.O. family was him. An odd scent suddenly went into Shi Yan's mouth and nose, which made him stand up quickly and walk around Hu Long. He turned pale and said, Brother Hu Long, you have a strange fragrance on your body, you shouldn't have escaped alive, ah. Kid, what do you mean? Di Yalan stared at him, you wish Hu Long was killed. But Hu Long realized what he meant after a thought, and he answered with a bitter smile, so it is. They didn't kill me because they wanted to find you. I thought I got lucky. Ha <laughs> ha. Then, before Di Yalan could stop him, Hu Long kneeled down in front of Mu Yu Dai and kowtowed three times, he said, Miss Mu, please live on happily and avenge us. He then stood up and ran away quickly as his lamenting voice came afar, leave soon. Take the other way. I will distract them and earn as much time as possible for you. Hu Long. Di Yalan and Mu Yu Dai wailed loudly. We should leave right now. Miss Mu, remember the grief and live on well. Shi Yen looked serious as he stretched out his hand to Di Yalan, give the star bombs to me. You leave with Miss Mu. I will catch up to you soon. Di Yalan's mind became blank because of her friend's deaths. She was dumbstruck for a while, then she handed the three star bombs to Shi Yen, and asked in husky voice, What are you going to do? For now, to ask for some interest for Uncle Luo. Shi Yen went up to Tumu's body quickly with an icy face and cut open Tumu's belly with his dagger and then put two star bombs inside it. After that, Shi Yen wiped the seven snake saliva on the belly carefully, and turned over Tumu's body, now his body was lying face down. People get curious. Once the people of Tush Mercenary Union come, they won't be able to help but turn over Tumu's body they see him like this. Thus the star bombs will explode. Guess what will happen if his body was turned over heavily? Shi Yen smirked. I got it. Di Yalan looked vicious too, the more of them being killed, the better. I also put some poisonous powder on his body. After the star bombs explode, the powder will stick to the blades and once the blades cut people, they will definitely die. Shi Yen looked cold, let's go, we should live on. Or else we can't avenge Uncle Luo. I hope Hu Long is fine. Mu Yu Dai murmured with hazy eyes. Shi Yen was a little sad, for he knew there was no possibility of Hu Long surviving. Still, he comforted her, don't worry, our trap may damage them badly. Maybe we can still meet up with Hu Long. Really? Mu Yu Dai asked weakly, though she knew it was not realistic, she still wished someone could give her an answer, even if it was a lie. Sure, he will be all right. Shi Yen nodded with certainty, and made eye contact with Di Yalan. Di Yalan understood what he meant, as she carried Mu Yu Dai and ran into the woods. Shi Yen took a deep breath, summoned all of his energy and caught up in a hurry. A quarter of an hour later. The three parties, the Dark World, the M.O. family and the Tush Mercenary Union, appeared together. They reached here by following the scent on Hu Long. Tomu. At the sight of the axe beside the body, Bernard realized at once that it was Tomu. He was so shocked that he cried, it's impossible. How could they kill Tomu? Didn't you say we would just need to collect the people we want when we get here, 
the crescent emissary grunted with cold eyes, luckily I had left the dark moon fragrance on that guy, or else we would have needed to search for them everywhere. Bernard was rather confused as he ordered, Swa Song, turn Tumul over and check him. It was that boy who killed him. Mo Yenyu reminded Mo Chauga in a very low voice, everyone who was killed by him will be drained. There must be poison on that boy's weapon. That boy is something. Mo Chauga nodded and reminded her, be careful later. Don't become impulsive. Got it. As they were talking, Swa Song, a member of the Tush Mercenary Union, had already run to Tumu's body on Bernard's order. Swa Song grasped Tumu's shoulder and turned his body over, and was just about to examine it. Thud. The back of Tumu's body kicked on the ground heavily. Bang. Bang. A severe blast exploded out. Tumu's body ruptured into thousands of pieces in an instant. Thousands of blades mixed within Tumu's flesh and blood flew out from his body like stars. As the blast was unexpected, those blades covered with flesh and blood shot toward everybody directly. As the Tush mercenary union stood closest to Tumu, they were hit first. Due to the flying blades, three mercenaries turned into honeycombs, with bloody holes appearing all over their bodies. Swa Song, who had turned Tumu over, was blasted apart and his flesh and blood was mixed with Tumu's, flying in all directions. The Dark World emissaries and people from M.O. family didn't expect such a development, and thus they also didn't escape from it. Though they were dozens of meters away, the warriors were injured as well, especially those of the elementary realm from the M.O. family. They were cut by blades before they could defend themselves. Miserable screeches continued. The blast from the two star bombs made it hell in this area. Flesh and blood filled the air. Limbs and entrails were spread all over on the ground. Amidst the terrifying howls, everybody was panic-stricken. Seeing that picture, Mo Yenyu, who was protected by Mo Chauga, couldn't stand anymore. She turned pale and vomited. Some warriors from the Dark World and Mo family were only cut by blades, they thought themselves lucky. But soon they felt pain in their body and began to lose their vision. Damn it! Poison on the blades. Mo Chauga looked as if been stomped on by someone. He stared at the warriors from Mo family and shouted, Cut off your wounded flesh. Fast. Fast. The huge man Johnson's arm was cut by a blade, so it was bleeding badly. Johnson was so terrified that he clenched his teeth and cut half of his left arm off. He howled and kneeled down, Miss Mo, please bind this up for me. Oh. When Mo Yenyu stood up and saw Johnson's dismembered arm, she got sick and began to vomit again. Looking at the flesh, entrails, limbs and green bodies on the ground, Bernard boiled with rage, and his eyes were filled with murderous desire. He will eat whoever did all this alive. Among them, the Dark World lost three people, while the M.O. family lost five. Since Bernard was closest to Tumu, he suffered the biggest loss, for all his people were dead. He was on his own now. I'm gonna kill them. I'm gonna kill them. I'm gonna kill them. Bernard kept howling like a crazy demon beast. Humph. The Crescent Emissary grunted and said to M.O. Chauga, let's keep chasing. Leave him alone. He lost people and blamed Bernard for it. If Bernard didn't order Zwa Song to turn over Tumu's body, there wouldn't be such a crazy blast. Let's keep chasing. M.O. Chauga nodded and left with the people from the Dark World, not bothering to deal with Bernard, who was raving like a lunatic. I will kill them. Bernard panted as he looked in the direction where the Dark World and Mo family people went. After a long while, he chased after them with a murderous look, you're tuning into the Han Lee's Wuxia Adventures YouTube channel. Don't forget to subscribe and join us on this journey to catch the most captivating stories. Chapter 29, Eating Human Flesh Chapter 29, Eating Human Flesh In the thick forest, while carrying Mu Yu Dai on her back, Di Yalan was moving with Shi Yen. Being on alert, Shi Yen was observing the surroundings carefully. 
Once he found trails of demon beasts, he would tell Di Yaolin in advance, thus she could change her direction to avoid meeting demon beasts. Time flew by. Quickly it became dark and there was the bright moon hanging in the sky. Terrible howls could be heard in the serene forest now and then. Those demon beasts who loved to move around at night began to hunt at this time after resting during the day. And at night, Shi Yan's eyesight worsened, making it hard for him to distinguish a safe area from a demon beast occupied area. Some demon beasts didn't even make a sound when they were hunting. Thus, where there were howls of demon beasts would be an unsafe place, but where there were no howls, didn't mean it was safe either. It might be hiding in even greater danger. After three hours of running, Di Yalin and Shi Yan were both tired. Though they killed Tuma together at dusk, they paid a price. Di Yalin had lost too much profound chi defending against Tumu's fierce attack, and she continued consuming her energy by running non-stop in the woods with Mu Yu Dai on her back. Di Yalin was extremely exhausted now. It was only her strong willpower that was supporting her along. Shi Yan was in no better state either, his shoulder was wounded, and though it was bound up and the immortal martial spirit was helping him recover, it still needed more time. The side effect of operating was a great loss of energy. Also, Kinmo and Tomo's profound chi which he had absorbed was still being purified, and the desire for blood was welling up now and then, but he still needed to observe the surroundings cautiously. He was even more tired than Di Yalin. Let's have a rest. Mu Yu Dai advised softly. According to Di Yalin's heavier steps and slower actions, Mu Yu Dai realized that she was going to hit her limit soon. Okay. Shi Yan took a breath and replied calmly, let me find a comfortable place. Immediately, he climbed up an ancient tree like a monkey to find dense foliage to hide himself. Standing on that ancient tree, Shi Yan was examining the surroundings. Dancing from tree branch to tree branch, he moved to a nearby withered tree. The ancient tree had thick, dry trunk, it must have been dead for years. Shi Yan examined the dry branch of that withered ancient tree, and was surprised, this tree is hollow from the inside, and its bottom is spacious enough for us three to sit down. A good place. You two have a rest first, then come up. The upper part of that ancient tree was thin and was only wide enough for one person to slip in, but its bottom was rather thick. It was ten meters tall, which was easy for Shi Yan and Di Yalin to slip down, and also wide enough for Mu Yu Dai to climb with the help of a rope. Hearing that there was such a good place, Di Yalin couldn't bear it anymore, and urged, then let's get in soon. Demon beasts haunt this area. If we bump into one, it would become trouble. Okay, hand that rope to me. I will pull Miss Mu up first. Two minutes later. The three of them sat down together in the hollow bottom of that ancient tree trunk. The starlight fell into the empty center of the trunk. Outside, the demon beasts were howling ominously. There was total silence inside. Mu Yu Dai and Di Yalin were filled with agony. All along the way, those two had stuck with Luo Hao and helped each other through many difficulties. But now, only the two of them were alive, and it was still uncertain if they could survive. Their friends had died and bad guys kept chasing. Maybe tomorrow the people of the Dark World and the Tush Mercenary Union would catch them and harass them. The feeling of hopeless for tomorrow made Mu Yu Dai and Di Yalin quite worried. Shi Yan's state was better, for he hadn't been together with Luo Hao for a long time, so he wasn't so emotional. Although the three of them died, he felt far from grieved and could still think straight. Well, he also felt regret for Luo Hao's death. Luo Hao had treated him well and had trained him within his gravitational field every night, which consumed a lot of Luo Hao's energy. He owed Luo Hao a lot. Especially when he heard Luo Hao's death was connected to the M.O. family, he thought he should take responsibility. He engraved the three parties, the Dark World, the Tush Mercenary Union and the M.O. family, in mind and was determined to take revenge someday. After glancing at Di Yalin and Mu Yu Dai, Shi Yan frowned. They looked dull and hopeless, without any fighting spirit. 
He knew they were hurt deeply by Luo Hao's death, but it was still a long way to the merchant union, they wouldn't survive if they lost their fighting spirit. Pondering for a while, Shi Yan considered doing something. Gazing at them, he came up with an idea. In the center of the hollow tree, the three of them sat down cross-legged. However, due to limited space, when the three of them all sat together, there was only a small space between them. Their legs were so close to each other that they could even feel the warmth from each other's body. At first, Shi Yan kept his legs together, with a tiny gap between his and the legs of the other women. But he suddenly spread his legs a little, with his left leg touching the leg of Di Yalan, and his right leg touching the leg of Mu Yudai. He could clearly feel the difference between the muscles of the two women. One's thigh was strong and solid, while the other's was smooth and soft, he liked both of them. Shi Yan's little action seemed unintentional, but the two girls both had reaction in their bodies. Di Yalan raised her head and glared at him, but didn't say anything. However, Mu Yu Dai was apparently a little embarrassed. She blushed, and she tried to move her left leg secretly in order to keep a distance from Shi Yan's right leg. But every time she moved her leg, Shi Yan would move his right leg as well, taking every opportunity to touch her soft leg. After several times, Mu Yu Dai was a little irritated. She realized that Shi Yan was doing this on purpose to take advantage of her, but there was nothing she could do. Her face turned red and she blushed, calling Shi Yan a bastard in secret. But due to the drama with Shi Yan, Mu Yu Dai forgot her sorrow for a while. She was so focused on cursing Shi Yan that she forgot the terrible death of Luo Hao and others. On the other side, Di Yalan saw through the little tricks Shi Yan was playing with Mu Yu Dai. She seemed to have realized something, and so she didn't jump up to stop him. On the contrary, she was staring at Mu Yu Dai with a mocking look, as if she was saying that Mu Yu Dai was taking this too seriously. Noticing Di Yalan's look, Mu Yu Dai was even more embarrassed, and her face was becoming even redder. She was so angry on the inside that she rolled her eyes at Shi Yan with a look of shame. Shi Yan closed his eyes, pretending that he was not doing all this on purpose. He breathed in and out naturally, as if he was sleeping. Endure. Endure it. I won't let you go peacefully when I recover. Mu Yu Dai was cursing Shi Yan on the inside. She could feel Shi Yan's body temperature on her skin, and her face had turned completely red. But all she could do was to curse him on the inside. Of course Shi Yan wasn't sleeping. With his eyes closed, he was feeling and comparing the touch of their thighs. The muscles on Di Yalan's leg was strong and vigorous, while Mu Yu Dai's felt soft and bouncy. Both of them were so attractive. After comparing for a while, Shi Yan decided that both of their thighs felt good. He felt so wonderful that he could barely tell which of them was better. However, while he was focusing on comparing those thighs, Shi Yan started to feel a burning sexual arousal. His primitive desires were out of their cage. From within his meridians, threads of negative energy started to seep out secretly. Shi Yan could feel his pants getting tighter and tighter. His breath became shorter and shorter. From deep within, he didn't have the crazy desire for killing. Instead, he could only feel one simple, but strong desire. The more he suppressed his lust, the more he was about to lose control. Shi Yan lost control of himself gradually. Mu Yu Dai suddenly noticed this change. She called out in a low voice, Sister Lan, this guy looks a little strange. It seems, it seems he is returning to the beast he used to be. Shi Yan was breathing heavily, with sweat covering his forehead. His body was trembling slightly. It looked like he was trying very hard to fight something from the inside. Because the two, Di Yalan and Mu Yu Dai, were sitting next to him with their thighs touching each other, they both noticed the strange reaction on Shi Yan's body. Glaring at Shi Yan for a moment, Di Yalan blushed as she said, this time he is different. He wanted to kill before, but now he, he. Now what? Mu Yu Dai was confused. Now he wants to eat human flesh, 
Di Yaolin answered briefly. She looked a little embarrassed as well, and couldn't finish her sentence with a more detailed explanation. Eat human flesh. Mu Yudai's face turned white as she heard this. She screamed with terror, this is even worse. How come? Will he also turn into those demon beasts? Sister Lan, is he gonna eat us both? What should we do? Apparently she didn't understand Di Yaolin. You silly girl, what are you thinking about? Di Yaolin cursed with embarrassment, he is turning into a horny beast. Mu Yu Dai froze for a while before she realized something. Her pretty face got even redder. She mumbled, Sister Lan, just let me play the zither for a while to help him release his energy. How about you go out for a while? I. I want to go out as well. Okay, I will show you out. Di Yalin nodded. Her eyes lit up with a flash of light, and was about to fly up. Just then. Shi Yen suddenly opened his eyes. With bloodshot eyes, he grabbed Di Yalin like a horny beast. The tree hole was not that big. When she was pinned by Shi Yen, Di Yalin could barely move her beautiful body. There was no way she could escape. Bastard. Take your hands off me. Di Yalin screamed, you dumb girl, pull him away. Quick. Mu Yu Dai was taken over with panic. She tried to pull Shi Yen away, but his body was as heavy as a rock. No matter how hard she tried, his body just wouldn't move. Di Yalin was extremely exhausted these days. With her profound chi not yet recovered, she could barely struggle against Shi Yan's beastly force. Chi La. A loud sound of clothes being torn broke the silence in the tree hole. Di Yalin felt a little chilly around her hip. She instantly realized that her leather skirt was gone. But before she could even defend, she felt a giant hand reaching between her thighs and rubbing her hip insatiably. Bastard! Di Yalin couldn't help but scream. She shouted to Mu Yudai, quick! Stop him! He has been overtaken by his genitals. I, I can't stop him. Mu Yudai punched on Shi Yan's back with all her might and cried out in panic. Hmm, with her sensitive parts being touched and rubbed by those fingers, Di Yalin gradually lost her defenses. She couldn't find any strength to fight back, and couldn't help moaning. Her arms gave up the fight as well. Mu Yudai was astonished. She whispered in a low voice with blushed face, Sister Lan, why, why are you screaming? I am not screaming. Do something, ouch, Di Yalin felt weaker and weaker, and her voice were getting softer as well. Sister Lan, it's too la, late. Mu Yudai mumbled with her eyes filled with fear. Wah! What's too late? Di Yalin was stunned. The next moment, she felt a hard thing inside her body. With her body trembling with the thrill, Di Yalin realized that it was too late to put on a fight. A miraculous feeling pervaded in her body and drowned her sanity. Ah well, well, maybe we will all be dead tomorrow. I will just let you take me this time. The continuous pounding she felt from that guy had completely crushed her defenses, both physically and mentally. Di Yalin covered her mouth with one hand. She couldn't help but scream with pleasure, as Shi Yen continuously twitched inside of her. Mu Yu Dai's pretty face was covered in panic. She stood there like a statue, watching the two of them getting all sweaty. Right in front of her, Shi Yen was working hard on Di Yalin. Apparently, under his mighty force, Di Yalin couldn't put on much fight. She gradually got lost in his passion as well, and even moved her hips to match Shi Yan's rhythm. You, you, you too. Mu Yu Dai's pretty face was also bloodshot. She couldn't do anything but stare at the two of them lying within such a narrow space, doing it right in front of her eyes. The hot picture of them was mind blowing for her. Mu Yu Dai was dumbstruck and didn't know what to do at all. You're tuning into the Han Li's Wuxia Adventures YouTube channel. Don't forget to subscribe and join us on this journey to catch the most captivating stories. Chapter 30, Inside the Tree 
Chapter 30, Inside the Tree Shi Yen suddenly regained his sanity in the middle of his actions. His body was still working on the woman, with waves of physical pleasure coursing through him. Even with his eyes closed, he could instantly tell what he had been doing. He had one hand on Di Yalan's hips, pulling her alluring body tightly towards him, and the other hand lingering on her extraordinary bosoms, rubbing and squeezing. That hot body of Di Yalan's was completely under his control. She was all over his body like a snake. Her eyes were lost in the passion, with sweet sweat all over her body, she couldn't help but move along with his rhythm, only to bring him more excitement and pleasure. Many thoughts were speeding through Shi Yan's mind, but his eyes remained shut. Neither did he move his hands roughly. He continued to work his lower body on that woman, and took every moment to enjoy this wonderful experience. Compared to the rough actions he had before, after he regained his sanity, Shi Yen slightly slowed down his movements with a softer touch, yet with way more masterful skills. His hands were blessed by magic. When he moved those hands on Di Yalan's body, he knew exactly which spots to work on, triggering an even bigger reaction in her body. Suddenly, Di Yalan's body was flipped around, with her impressive breasts pressed tightly against the tree while her hips were thrust towards Shi Yen. She lifted her plump hips up, shaking and swinging it back and forth, enjoying Shi Yan's whipping in a new position. Mu Yu Dai was totally embarrassed and blushing. She leaned her fragile body onto the other side of the tree. Her beautiful eyes were lingering and staring at the two of them doing it. With his eyes shut, Shi Yan was totally enjoying the moment. He had let his most primitive desires out of his body, which seemed to have sped up the purification process of the profound qi in his meridians. Di Yalan was already lost in his passion, doing nothing but coordinating with Shi Yan's movements. Before long, Shi Yan felt a strong wave of pleasure flooding towards his brain, completely out of his control. Together with that thrilling excitement, he could feel a most wonderful power start pouring out of his meridians and rushing into his body. When that strange power reached his abdomen, it split into two parts. One poured into his profound qi, while the other part blended with his essence and shot into Di Yalan's body with his coming climax. With the short gasps of the sweaty man and woman, Mu Yu Dai lost all her strength. She fell down onto the ground, breathing heavily as her whole mind went completely blank. Shi Yen slowly moved away from Di Yalan. He pulled up his pants, sat down in silence and started to operate the profound qi inside his body. Di Yalan had lost all her strength as well, lying weakly on the ground, her whole body shining with a sexy red color. She only came to her senses after a while. She put on her leather skirt with a red face and slowly sat down. The three of them returned to their original positions, sitting together in the tree with crossed legs. Mu Yu Dai was the first to regain her calm. Although her face was still a little red, she moved her beautiful eyes between Shi Yan and Di Yalan, as if expecting something from them. Shi Yan looked calm on the outside. He kept his eyes closed, and focused his attention on the strange power he felt in his profound qi during his orgasm. He was guiding this power within his profound qi slowly through his body. He wouldn't want to miss any opportunity to enhance his power. Di Yalan hadn't opened her eyes yet, but she knew that Mu Yu Dai was staring at her the whole time. Out of shame, she didn't dare to open her eyes and look up. She was so ashamed that she just wanted to bury herself in the ground. Shi Yen had forced himself on her inside this tree, right in front of Mu Yu Dai. However, she didn't put up much of a fight. Even worse, she was actually enjoying it during the process. She felt so ashamed of herself. Despite being a casual and bold girl, she knew this craziness was totally out of line for her. She was too ashamed to face Mu Yu Dai. Right about that time, a strange excitement slowly rose and spread from the sensitive parts of her lower body. Di Yalan couldn't help but tremble, and almost moaned again. She anxiously twisted her body, secretly calling herself a slut, and quickly concentrated her attention on the change that was going on in her body. After some observation, 
Di Yalan felt that the strange power inside of her had turned into two streams. One stream was flowing slowly towards her abdomen, while the other part had settled around her chest and her flesh and muscles, which seemed to have altered the parts around her chest in secret. She could clearly feel her bones and flesh, muscles and vessels around her chest going through some incredible changes which she couldn't explain. That strange energy, mixed with her profound chi, had been pouring into her abdomen, driving out a strong wave of power from within. Her profound chi had suddenly been enhanced enormously. Di Yalin couldn't help but exclaim. She quickly concentrated on dealing with her refreshed profound chi, operating it through a specific path through her body. The bright moonlight was shining into the tree, and lit up the tiny space inside. Shi Yen slowly woke up, breathing slowing in and out with a calm rhythm. He had reached the second sky of the nascent realm. With the help of that strange power, Shi Yen had enhanced himself to the next level, and successfully reached the second sky of the nascent realm. After he woke up, Shi Yen found the wound on his shoulder didn't hurt that much. With the help of the immortal martial spirit, the broken bones and muscles were slowly regenerating and recovering themselves on their own. With this speed, it would only take a few days before he had fully recovered. When he slowly opened his eyes, Shi Yen noticed a bright pair of eyes staring straight at him. But when he looked back, those beautiful eyes quickly looked away. Miss Mu, how come you are still awake? Shi Yen said with a calm voice, with nothing strange showing on his face. Seeing Shi Yen looking back at her, Mu Yu Dai was so embarrassed that she quickly looked away. She turned her face away with a blush to avoid eye contact, and said in a joking tone, You two were making such loud noises. How is it possible for me to fall asleep? Oh, so sorry to disturb you. I will remember that next time. Shi Yen laughed with embarrassment and defended himself with a natural explanation, there must be something wrong with my body. Something odd happened to me and destroyed my sanity. There's nothing I could do about it. Sorry. So you mean you were unconscious during the whole time? Mu Yu Dai said with a grin on her face, I was watching you two doing it. At first you were, but afterwards. Afterwards you couldn't have been unconscious. Otherwise, otherwise, you wouldn't be able to, to do that kind of thing. Mu Yu Dai was too shy to continue her sentence. She was right there when Shi Yen pulled out all those tricks on Di Yalan. No one in their unconscious mind would be able to play all those sexual tricks or remember all those different kinds of sexual positions, right in the middle of being insane. Therefore, Mu Yu Dai was certain that Shi Yen had come to his senses way before he finished on Di Yalan. Air, Shi Yen was completely speechless for a while. He sat frozen there for some time and put on an embarrassing smile, So Miss Mu, have you have been watching us doing it the whole time? Then please spare my rude actions. I know that I am a real bastard. You. How can you be so shameless? Mu Yu Dai got so angry that she hit Shi Yen hard on his thigh, making Shi Yen scream and beg for mercy. Seeing Shi Yen suffering and screaming, Mu Yu Dai felt a little better. She turned around and saw Di Yalan was also sitting there in silence with her eyes closed. However, her face was also carrying a shiny blush. Mu Yu Dai also felt angry towards Di Yalan. She jumped over to her side and suddenly patted on her thigh. Di Yalan was already very embarrassed. She couldn't help the trembling of her body but still kept her eyes shut. She thought this was another trick of Shi Yen, and called him a fucking bastard in secret. After all this, how dare he still tease her like this? Sister Lan, how long are you planning to fool us by sleeping? Your face is already as red as an apple. And you still want to pretend that you are operating your profound chi? You think we are both too foolish to tell? Mu Yu Dai said in an annoyed voice. Di Yalan let out a soft sigh and opened her eyes reluctantly. She replied with embarrassment, I. I just woke up. What, what are you two talking about? I have no idea. Mu Yu Dai went silent all of a sudden. 
However, the beautiful but sharp eyes of hers were continuously moving between Di Yalan and Shi Yen. Her underlying sentence was obvious, how can you just pretend that nothing had happened between the two of you? Under the judgmental stare from Mu Yu Dai, Shi Yen still remained calm and peaceful. You've got to say, there aren't many people as shameless as him in this world. He actually could pretend that nothing had happened between him and the woman. Because he guessed that Di Yalan actually wouldn't mind this thing very much. She would even like or miss this kind of feeling. Knowing that he wouldn't receive any trouble from Di Yalan, he didn't bother to worry at all. However, under Mu Yu Dai's questioning look, Di Yalan wasn't able to remain that calm. She thought about it and decided that she should express some anger toward Shi Yen. Otherwise, she would really appear to be shameless in the eyes of Mu Yu Dai. Despite everything, Shi Yen had helped her experience overwhelming pleasure and excitement, which her man could hardly offer even back when he was still alive. You fucking bastard. Di Yalan suddenly jumped up, screaming with a sharp voice and pointing right at Shi Yen, How dare you do that to me back then? How dare you? Shu. Sure. Keep it quiet. You are gonna draw all those demon beasts here. Furthermore, the people from the dark world are still chasing us. Shi Yen reminded her. Di Yalan nodded. She had lost her power again, and said in a low voice, You asshole, so how are you gonna make it up to me? Seeing Di Yalan acting like this, he was even more assured about his prior judgment. He knew that she didn't mind this little episode very much. She only jumped out to accuse him because of the pressure from Mu Yu Dai. Shi Yen was actually amused by her reaction. He pretended to be thinking very hard there. He bowed his head down, put on a sad face, pretending to be sincere in his apology, and said in an honest voice, It's all my fault. Sister Lan, how about you tell me, how would you like to be compensated? Di Yalan was literally surprised by his reply. She froze for a while and thought very hard about his question. She only came to curse him, because she didn't want to appear shameless in front of Mu Yu Dai. She actually hadn't really thought about how to punish Shi Yen. Caught by surprise by Shi Yen, she literally didn't know how to respond. How about, how about you beat him up and call it a night? Mu Yu Dai put on a naughty face and joked about it. Even she could tell that her sister Lan was not intending to punish Shi Yen, at least not very hard. That's a good idea. He surely deserves that. Di Yalan nodded with agreement, and said with a tough voice, just wait until he recovers from his wounds. At that time, I'm gonna kick his ass. You don't need to worry about this. I will make sure that you will be satisfied with his punishment. Mu Yu Dai rolled her eyes at Di Yalan and went completely speechless. What was that all about? What do I have to do with your business? So you are simply punishing him in order to make me satisfied? Whatever you two. I'm going to sleep. Mu Yu Dai had finally realized that she was literally caring too much. She should have just minded her own business. She mumbled as she turned to sleep, one horny man, one slutty woman, no wonder, you two were already expecting this to happen. I should have known better. Poor me, my soul has been hurt, and my eyes have been polluted. She kept a low voice, but due to the small space between the three of them, it wouldn't be a surprise that both Di Yalan and Shi Yen had heard her clearly. Shi Yen secretly grinned and pretended to be sleeping. However, Di Yalan couldn't take this anymore. She teased Mu Yu Dai a little, you wicked girl. Mu Yu Dai took a glance at her and mumbled again, you too, be quiet for the rest of the night. I really need some good sleep. Please, just control yourselves. I cannot take your actions anymore. Di Yalan replied with a blush on her face, I know, I know, just go to sleep, you wicked girl. You're tuning into the Han Li's Wuxia Adventures YouTube channel. Don't forget to subscribe and join us on this journey to catch the most captivating stories. Chapter 31 Blue Magic Flames Chapter 31 Blue Magic Flames Mu Yu Dai did as she was told, and shut her mouth. 
However, with Mu Yudai staying quiet, the atmosphere between Di Yalan and Shi Yan got a little embarrassing. The two of them just lay there facing each other. Neither of them knew what to say. It's about dawn. Shi Yan looked up at the sky, trying to make some casual conversation. How are you feeling? Has your profound qi recovered? Not only has my profound qi recovered, but it has also been enhanced. Di Yalan checked her body in secret. Her eyes suddenly lit up in excitement. She said in a low voice, with a blush on her face, Back then, back then it seemed like there was some strange energy streaming into my body. That strange energy merged with my own profound qi, and even altered something in my chest. She frowned a little, trying very hard to recall the feeling. She thought that the strange stream of energy seemed to have come from Shi Yen, or was originated from the profound qi that he had shot into her body. Shi Yen thought for a while, and whispered to himself, it really is that. Di Yalan's gorgeous eyes lit up with an exotic charm again. She insisted, is it because of you? Shi Yen nodded, and explained with a smile, I once received some pills from an alchemist, but when I took them I never managed to absorb them entirely. However, those pills, as well as their power, still remain inside my body. Back then, back then it seemed as if the power of those pills merged with my profound qi and got planted into your body as well. The thing about absorbing profound qi from dead people was too creepy and scary to talk about, and Shi Yen didn't want anybody else to know about his secret. Therefore, he was using Master Karu as an excuse, and claiming all his strange power due to those pills. Those pills must have been extraordinarily precious. Di Yalan nodded. She seemed to have bought Shi Yan's story. Along their travels, Shi Yan had resorted to using poisonous medicine powders several times. Therefore, she had already suspected that Shi Yan had some kind of relation with an alchemist. Yeah, I guess. Shi Yan smiled without elaborating too much on his relationship with Master Karu. He thought for a while and said with a frown, You mentioned that there was a strange stream of energy which seemed to have changed the muscles and blood vessels within your chest. Can you try to operate your profound qi around your chest and see if there are any reactions? Shi Yen suddenly thought of the miraculous awakening of his petrification martial spirit inside his body. It seemed that the strange flow of energy could not only enhance one's profound qi, but also trigger one's dormant martial spirit. It was exactly due to the influence of that strange energy that the dormant petrification martial spirit inside his body had suddenly awakened. Even the emergence of the immortal martial spirit probably had something to do with that strange stream of energy. Hearing Di Yalan talking about the odd changes in her chest, Shi Yan had already come up with a theory. Okay. Let me try. Di Yalan slowly nodded. She concentrated her energy into her chest and paid close attention to the changes happening inside. Controlling her profound qi, streams of profound qi flew into her beautiful bosoms, and lingered for a while around her tender breasts. But now, her profound qi seemed to be a bit different. Suddenly a most amazing thing happened. It seemed that her profound qi had changed and was becoming hotter and hotter. Di Yalan suddenly panicked. She quickly moved the profound chi towards her arm, and then through the veins and vessels, into her right palm. Boom! A magic flame the color of purest blue suddenly jumped out of Di Yalan's right palm. Although the flame was merely the size of a fist, it was burning with an extraordinarily high temperature. The little flame was dancing on Di Yalan's palm, lighting up the hollow tree, as if they were embraced by the tender blue waves of the ocean. Wow! Di Yalan couldn't help but exclaim. She jumped with excitement and her eyes were shining brightly. Bingo! Shi Yen was also secretly cheering. He was right about this energy. Looking at that blue flame, he was now certain that that strange energy could really trigger one's inborn martial spirit. The blue magic flame. Di Yalan couldn't help but scream in excitement. She said with complete thrill, this is the martial spirit of my family. I know about this. This is the blue magic flame's martial spirit. 
since my grandfather, no one has inherited this martial spirit. Oh my God! But how, how is this even possible? Mu Yu Dai was already awake due to the noise they were making. She was also staring at Di Yalan, but couldn't figure out what was going on. Mu Yu Dai looked so confused, how is that even possible? Sister Lan, you are already twenty-seven years old. How come that you could still awaken the dormant martial spirit inside your body? What is going on here? Is this a dream? She rubbed her eyes and still couldn't believe what just happened. Ha! Di Yalan was brimming with excitement. She had absolutely no idea how to express her bliss. She couldn't help but continuously stare at that blue burning flame on her palm, and she suddenly burst into tears. She was actually crying in joy. However, Shi Yen could totally understand her feelings. On the Grace mainland, warriors with martial spirits definitely took a dominant position. They would have more prosperous future as well. To warriors, the martial spirits were more important than anything else. Those without a martial spirit would often dream and kill for a martial spirit. To warriors like Di Yalan, whose family had once possessed a martial spirit, it was a real shame not to carry on their family's martial spirit as an inheritance. If this situation continued for several generations, even the most glorious family could end up fading into oblivion. No matter if it was the warrior, or their family, possession of a martial spirit was essential. So what is really going on here? Mu Yu Dai was still confused after staring at Di Yalan for a while, who was totally flying high in excitement, so she had to turn the question to Shi Yen. Um, Shi Yen put on an embarrassed smile, well, this is hard to explain. It has something to do with the pills and their exotic power. I don't exactly know what kind of pills they were. Anyway, those pills are indeed a little extraordinary. Quit staring at me like that. I already said I really have no idea. You bastard. Come here. Thank you. Thank you. Di Yalan put out the blue flame on her palm, and suddenly hugged Shi Yen tightly, as if she were trying to squeeze his whole body into her bosom. Her sexy body couldn't help but tremble with the excitement. Those delicious bosoms of hers were squeezed against Shi Yan's chest, which gave Shi Yan the opportunity to experience their glorious softness again. Before long, he had that kind of reaction from below his belt again. But this time, Di Yalan found out about his little thrill down there almost immediately. She quickly released Shi Yan from her arms with a blush on her face. Her eyes were especially charming, shining with light and dancing colors. She couldn't help but laugh and said with a smile, You ass, always so horny. Hey, Shi Yen also laughed in embarrassment. He didn't give a reply though. Mu Yu Dai stared at the two people and she was obviously not so happy, Hey. You too, knock it off. I am still here. Don't put on a sex show in front of me every time you get a chance. You wicked girl. I'm just too excited. Di Yalan replied with a laugh. What is going on after all? The question was killing Mu Yu Dai. I don't know either. Di Yalan shook her head, her eyes still lit up with those flying colors. She laughed, I guess it's all because of him. You mean, you had sex with this guy? and then all of a sudden, your martial spirit that had been dormant inside of your body for twenty-seven years, which probably would never be awakened in your life, was suddenly brought to life. Mu Yu Dai said with a curious look on her pretty face. Incredible as it sounds, that is the truth. Di Yalan admitted with a red face. So, so the essence of his, what is it? Some magic medicine with a strange power? Mu Yu Dai also started to blush. She shook her head as she couldn't believe this at all, no, no. I don't believe this. This doesn't make sense at all. Hmm, Shi Yen looked up at the sky from the hollow tree, and said, the sun is out. We should get going. Yeah, we should probably keep moving. Di Yalan agreed. 
Apparently, she didn't want to spend too much time discussing this issue about herself, in case Mu Yu Dai would say something again to embarrass her. After saying that, Di Yalan quickly flew up to the top of the hollow tree. She threw a rope down to the two of them and asked Mu Yu Dai to come out quickly. No, I am still not buying it. Mu Yu Dai was obviously still obsessed with the issue, and only grabbed that rope after some sighing and groaning. With Di Yalan's help, Mu Yu Dai slowly rose up with help from the rope, and slowly rose to the top of the hollow tree. Ah! You asshole! What are you doing? Mu Yu Dai suddenly started screaming. The two delicate legs of hers were kicking desperately, and her mesmerizing body was swinging in the air. Let me help you with this. Shi Yen put both his hands on Mu Yu Dai's soft bottom and tried to lift her up. He said with a horny smile, There you go. This will save you some effort. No. Stop it. I don't want your help. Mu Yu Dai shouted with her body twisting intensely. Her hands suddenly lost their grip and she fell from midair. Thump. The two of them fell onto the ground inside the hollow tree. Shi Yen was lying there with a satisfactory look on his face. Mu Yu Dai was sitting right across his waist with her legs kicking and shouting, Stop! Stop! The soft and smooth bottom of hers was right where Shi Yen liked it most, pressing tightly against his sensitive parts. Shi Yan's dick was still hard due to the previous entanglement with Di Yalan. Now, with the pressing and twisting of Mu Yu Dai's hips, and her delicious parts continuously touching and rubbing his sensitive parts, Shi Yen was turned on again, and he almost couldn't help but moan in great pleasure. Ah! Asshole! You horny dog! It didn't take Mu Yu Dai much time to discover Shi Yan's intentions. She quickly got up with her hands covering her butt, screaming and crying. Her face was so pretty with that blush, and her beautiful eyes were filled with little tears. Sister Lan, this bad guy. He was trying to take advantage of me. Shu. Di Yalan looked pretty serious. She made a sign to tell them to stay quiet. Shi Yen quickly stood up. He suddenly forgot all about the sexy scenes that had previously happened in this hollow tree. He climbed up the tree quickly and stayed with Di Yalan. He said with a calm and cool voice, What's the situation? Demon Beasts. You're tuning into the Han Li's Wuxia Adventures YouTube channel. Don't forget to subscribe and join us on this journey to catch the most captivating stories.